come with us now, if you dare, down a rickety staircase into a dank, dark basement. What awaits the Saturday Night Freak Show? <laughs> Hey, thanks for listening to the Saturday Night Freak Show podcast. We're a movie review podcast where we watch movie. movies <laughs> and we talk about it. We may crack open a few cold ones and uh, talk about a movie chosen round robin by one of our members each week, every Saturday and archived on Apple Podcasts, Stitcher Radio, TuneIn Radio and PodBay or Podcast Addict. And more, if you found us on one of these fine places, hey, we ask that you give us a like or a review or a star rating because it helps us get found by other like-minded individuals like yourself. Who are these internet radio superstars who'll be talking to you tonight? Sean. Michaela. Holly. And I'm Colin. And we'd love to hear from you. If yes, you'd please. like to write into the Saturday Night Free Show, we'd love to read your stuff in Igor's mailbag later on. You can find us on Facebook. Facebook.com slash Saturday Night Freak Show. On Twitter. At Sat Freak Show. You can email us. Saturday Night Freak Show at Yahoo.com. Or you can find us on Instagram at Saturday Night Freak Show. Tonight's movie was chosen by... Colin. Colin, what did we watch tonight? Well, it's the 30th oh. anniversary of The Lost Boys. 30 years. Wow. From 1987. Ooh. So we watched that. Directed by Joel Schumacher. Good old Joel Schumacher. Yeah. The man who will go down in infamy is the guy who ruined the Batman franchise. Yes. Yeah. yeah. But unfortunately, <laughs> unfortunately, but that he, is did, he did some good things. But he did some good things. He I was looking up to them. Just like, wow, I didn't know Joel Schumacher directed mm-hmm. these. The, like yeah. the client. Which is hard to kill. Hard yeah. to kill. Great movie. Not, no, no, no. no, not hard time to kill. To kill. Time, time to kill. Time to kill. Yeah, Steven hard to Seagal kill. Movie? Steven Seagal. Also yes. a great movie. <laughs> I still got Seagal in the mind from last week when we were talking about nineties like yeah. action martial mm-hmm. arts movies. Mm-hmm. Sorry, Flatliners, which Flat yeah. Liners, yeah. Right. Yeah. this uh, fall. Oh, so, boy. so what? Either he's re- remembered for ruining the Batman franchise, and everything he'd made that was halfway decent is now just being rebooted and will be forgotten anyway. So, except for DC Cab. <laughs> yeah. No. Saint Elmo's Fire. Saint Elmo's Fire. Oh, yeah, that's yeah. fire. Yeah. Yeah. Hello. I think that was the movie that he did prior to Just the Lost Boys. Yeah. 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 But he's done some yeah. good stuff. I love that movie. It put the uh, well. I remember like Joel Schumacher in this era. Like I always thought that he had like he was really good at casting. <laughs> His movies. He had some great cast. He did. But, I mean, George he was Clooney. Just basically- <laughs> Love that George Clooney. Colin, I'm surprised you didn't mention Phone Booth in that oh, list. Phone yeah. Booth. Phone booth. Phone booth. I was sh- shocked to read that today. I'm like, he directed Phone Booth? I know. Booth? I was, shocked. Mm-hmm. I was yeah. shocked that he did Trespass, too, because that movie was so bad. Uh, yeah, no one here seen it, right? Not yeah. the uh, Ice T one. No, the Nicolas Cage, the Nicolas Nicole Cage Kidman one. one. Right, yeah. mm. wow. No, because I think after Batman and Robin, his like his stock in Hollywood went to shit. And then yeah. I think he had to go like, do, uh, was it Tigerland? Where he yeah. discovered Colin Farrell, yeah. he's the guy who discovered Colin oh, Farrell. Really? Yeah, interesting. Yeah. With Tigerland, and then had to do these like low budget movies, and he did like this really low budget Blood uh, Creek. horror movie, Blood Creek. <laughs> Blood Creek. Yeah, <laughs> which I think he discovered Michael Fassbender. Maybe oh, or really? no, I don't know. If was three hundred before that, but Fassbender was the was really Nazi, ah. you know, zombie, whatever occult. Who knew that? He's been directing episodes of House of Cards, too, apparently. apparently. The first season, Did not yeah. know that. Yeah. Yeah. Interesting. And he did the big budget Phantom of the Opera movie, yes. which I don't think anybody saw, but I like nope, that you movie. Liked a it. Lot of, a lot of people love that movie. Yeah. 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 Mm-hmm. It's yeah. a, a Russell, beloved Gerard movie. Bob. It is. Mm-hmm. People love that movie. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. He had another experience with Nick Cage. It was uh, 8mm. Yeah. Oh, I enjoy yeah. that movie. Right. My mom yeah. would let me watch it. Yeah. Well, she was a good response <laughs> when it mother. came out. <laughs> would be good Not now. She's like, Sean, don't watch 8mm. She still calls me every now and again to tell me. You know, somewhere, somewhere right now, she just heard that and is like, wait, is Sean watching 8mm right now? <laughs> My phone's ringing. That would be a great can't episode. Can't talk now, Mom. <laughs> that would be a great episode to do sometime. <laughs> movies our parents inexplicably wouldn't let we, us watch. Can we bring our parents on? <laughs> There you oh go. Oh guest episodes. That's who's guesting yeah. in a couple months. I'm going to bring my parents on. Oh, my God. Uh, I think my It'd dad would be I think he Have would, them yeah. justify why they wouldn't let you watch 8mm. Or why they made me watch. It's just the whole episode's like, an attack of like, yeah. why wouldn't you let me watch why? this? It's why therapy. I can't do that, though, because they let me watch stuff. Like, when I was really young. My dad's the one who showed me all the horror movies back in the day. Or they let you watch from. this? Uh, I think I discovered this one on my own. Lost mm-hmm. Boys was my discovery. Although I think my, I'm pretty sure my dad, and my mom like it too. They've when watched, did you first come before. to the Lost Boys? Hmm. Uh, I don't know. I was very young. I don't know. 
I think mine was, mine was probably nineties, like a it's definitely USA yeah. TNT kind of situation. I think so. It was definitely yeah, a TV, definitely mm-hmm. a TV run where I first saw this. Yeah, but my parents wouldn't have given a shit. They didn't no. filter anything I watched at, at that point. They would have. Uh, yeah, would my favorite right. movie at four was Caddyshack. <laughs> they didn't care. <laughs> they did not care. I think I was a ripe young 13 or 14 when I first saw The Lost Boys. I didn't get to see it in the theater when it came out, so I saw it on VHS. But it's weird, like, watching it tonight, having that, like, kind of, like, it was a full-on nostalgia trip, Uh right, Mm -hmm. for, like, that era in my life. Because I remember... The framing for the VHS. Mm-hmm. Oh yeah! <laughs> like when I'm looking at certain shots, I'm like, "And you didn't see him on the VHS." Yeah, oh, There's yeah. that shot of uh, Kiefer Sutherland after they've killed the surf Nazis, yeah. and Kiefer Sutherland and is it Dwayne are yeah. standing yeah. there, yeah. and Vampire like Dwayne. they cut that into two shots in the yeah. VHS version. Huh. Here it's like you know a two shot mm-hmm. yeah. widescreen. Yeah, like thirty nice. years of the Lost Boys. Um, this movie, I remember it came out months apart from another. Uh, I think a vampire classic, but I don't know if anybody's even seen it. Near Dark. Yes. Near Dark. Yeah, That's, Near Dark is a fantastic I have movie. not seen it. That's going to make its way to the freak show. It has so. to. Because I have not seen it, and I keep hearing things about it, and uh, I, I want to watch it. I'm not familiar with it. I think that's my favorite Bill Paxton movie. Mm. Like Bill Paxton, yeah, yeah. sold. It's yeah. three characters or three actors from Aliens. They've just uh, done Aliens. Yeah, yeah. Janelle uh, Goldstein, she's yeah. in it, and it's directed and by Lance a woman, Anderson. Catherine Bigelow. Yeah. Mm-hmm. The yep. reason I know that movie is because of Bill Paxton. That imagery of mm-hmm. him and his messed yeah. up face. Yeah. yeah, like I've been seeing that That's image the for years. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah, yeah. For years I've seen that. And I never knew where it went to. Near yeah, dark. yeah. So it's that great. will be making its appearance not like, soon because we just watched a vampire movie. Yeah. Right. But at some point it will <laughs> it's be a vampire it's just, western. It's going to be the 30th anniversary of Near Dark here soon too. Oh, well, mm-hmm. there we see go. If, yeah. Like there's a number yeah, of podcasts or somebody do some shout outs for. There we go. For Near Dark, but we get Bill Paxton comment. All right, so maybe Aww. we can... May he rest. You had to do it, didn't you? I'm sorry. I love Bill Paxton. I apologize. Colin, Oh, no. Sorry. No, no. Yeah, no. Because, I mean, yeah, I'm, I'm with you there. Like, yeah. he was in all of, like, the seminal movies yeah. of, you know, my childhood or the yeah. 80, my teen years, I suppose, you know? From Aliens and Near True Dark. And, yeah, I mean, like, everything. Terminator. Mm-hmm. Terminator. So, yeah. much Twister, Twister, yeah. so much Twister. So much Twister. So much Twister. So much. All the time. So let's take you back in time mm, to nineteen geez. to pre nineteen eighty seven because we're talking that about one. vampire movies. Yes, all right. But the history of vampire films has always kind of been interesting to me because no. vampires are like a metaphor now for everything under the sun, almost. Yes, but bah. there was a period of time. <laughs> <laughs> But there was a period in time when the Hollywood vampire that was like established by Bela Lugosi Lugosi. and Dracula kind of set up like what the rules were Mm -hmm. for cinematic vampires. Mm -hmm. But specifically, the story didn't really change for, let's see, so we're saying like the 1922, maybe Nosferatu, all the way into the late 70s was basically a vampire is a an unholy creature that comes from the outside into your civilization. Mm-hmm. It's like almost exclusively a European, uh, you know, somewhere. It comes from the old country yes. into the new country, the right? Old country, yes. yeah, and is going to take your women. Um, specifically, okay, specifically, right? I mean, because that's always the thing. Is I mean, yeah, vampires yeah. going yeah. after yeah. your girl, and you have yeah. to do something looking about for it. his bride, as yeah, it were. Exactly. Yeah, right. mm-hmm. sure. But somewhere, and I'm thinking it was. The Anne Rice novel interview with the vampire changed all this and made it like, here, we're going to tell a story from a vampire's point of view. And then the movies start to then kind of take that. Like, wouldn't it be fun to be a vampire? Like, is it entirely bad to be a vampire? You know? So you you think that it was Anne Rice that first was showing compassion for the vampire and that's what changed it? Because I'm trying to remember something before that. Yeah. That, you know, I mean, because that was 77, I think that novel was. In 79, we had, you know, they were making Dracula movies, like Big Budget, the mm-hmm. the one we did on The Freak Show, the yeah. Frank Langella. Yeah. Uh, Nosferatu, the Vampire, the Werner Herzog, and Love at First Bite. And uh, vampires Werner. were in the uh, zeitgeist, I think, because mm-hmm. of the play. Dracula had come back on Broadway with the Frank Langella. Uh-huh. So everybody's thinking about vampires again. And she wrote, I think the same year that the play came out, she wrote Interview with the Vampire. But we're still, you know, I mean, even those guys are like the European. Right. Still big collars and capes and whatnot. And- yeah. Mm-hmm. 
Yeah. <laughs> Lots of monologuing. Lots yeah. of monologuing. But that's why I'm like... I mean, Sean's hissing. <laughs> Sean's <'Cause> hissing. <laughs> now he's doing the cape over the face. Yeah. Is that how yeah. it's another thing? Yeah. <laughs> oh. But what do you remember as far as like... I mean, where is the first movie or story that you can remember that where it was like, you know, uh, we're going to turn you... You know, you're, the central character is going to become a vampire, but by the end of the movie... Uh, we can cure you. So basically you're getting to experience the good side of being a vampire mm -hmm. with none of the lasting side of they're, it. None of the living forever and having to kill they're people. They're romanticizing being a vampire. Mm -hmm. Taking yes. the hell out of it and making it yes. tangible, kind of. Yeah, because yeah. I mean, if you follow this trend, then it leads into Twilight and Underworld, right? right. Where it's like, mm -hmm. now there's yeah. vampires like exclusively yeah. and, you know, we're in love with the vampires. and yeah. all that, So we've completely eradicated the, you know... The poisonous thing from another Make place. them feed on animals so that they're not evil. Right. Yeah. 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 Right. Yeah. Because yeah. before that, they were soulless. Right. You know, creatures. Soon they have day sure. jobs and they're just going home to read the paper because they just want to fucking relax. <laughs> <laughs> right. That's that's what we get to the normal everyday vampire. Yeah. It's like yeah, I gotta go kill a hooker tonight because we gotta feed. Wanna... Yeah. It's a hard. It's a rough life. It's a rough. Life. Make that movie, Sean. <laughs> well, <laughs> just I mean, the everyday like make cubicle like your, vampire. Yeah, your nine to five. Well, I mean, yeah. We, Office we did space, do, but we with did the vampire. Get Angela, the one religious woman we in the office. We did do every time what we do in the shadows on the freak show. Mm -hmm. That is pretty close. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. What? yeah. what we do in the shadows. One of uh, our episodes yeah. on That's the freak show. True. Yeah, yeah. They very, very much explored that. But just the farther future, where it's like vampires are like mundane. Like you know, the guy three cubicles over is a vampire. And that you it's all Daybreakers. Just, they did they make that movie? I, mean, this, I never saw uh, Daybreakers. This, was in, this wasn't a movie, but they definitely <laughs> explored that concept in True Blood on HBO. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's true. Very much so. Okay. Daybreakers didn't, yeah. it wasn't that deep of a movie. It was right. pretty I shallow. Everybody's yeah. a vampire. Was that the, yeah. one? Like, was they fed Ethan so Hawk much. In, in Ethan Hawke? Ethan Hawke was in that. It's definitely Sam Neill. Isn't he in there? Pretty sure. Yeah, that that movie wasn't good. No. Do not recommend uh, prior to this movie, one out of ten. I can think of well, I can think of the hunger that was eighty three, and that David was. Bowie. But she doesn't get cured of her vampirism. Mm -hmm. But you're with the main character who's becoming a vampire, and the right. horror of you know the biological change into a vampire, mm -hmm. and uh, once bitten. Ah, oh, yes. yes. <laughs> I'll help you forget that. Oh, I loved that movie when I was a kid. Sex scene yeah. in the coffin. Like, yeah. There's no way you could have done it. Yeah. He comes out smoking. But yeah. yeah. <laughs> So inappropriate for me watching it when I did. So oh, inappropriate. I didn't understand so it at all. No, no. I was like, what happened in that coffin? No doing, idea. Uh -huh. I knew smoking was bad. Though. PG. <laughs> yeah. You got to be 13. PG 13. Yeah, I was not 13. Oh. I was it wasn't R, was it? Mm -mm. I don't remember. No. I don't remember. I don't remember anything that crazy happening in that movie. It was more goofy. Yeah. I think that's got to be it. Like, uh, you know, I mean, your interview with the vampire where, you know, again, you're not cured of the of the yeah. syndrome of vampirism, the disease. But in Once Bitten, you are. And that's 86, mm -hmm. 87 is the next year. The oh, Lost Boys uh, and Near Dark. My neighbor is a, my neighbor's a vampire. Yeah. Is that's that the 88? Is that the one with the like coffin shaped? Uh, it's got uh, Werner, locker? Werner, David Warner in it. Uh, I think it's a, yeah, isn't it? Yeah, My Best Friend's a Vampire? My Best Friend's a Vampire, yeah. yeah that's yeah, 88, yeah. so that yeah. comes after this. Okay. And Fright Night was 85. Yeah. And I and always I like to think really... that, like, Fright Night was the capper on that, like, 70 years of, you know, the European yeah. vampire thing. Yeah. yeah. And the, you and know, the horror. Yeah, because, oh, I mean, it does, yeah. like, you know, all the the garlic, the holy water, the right. crucifixes, all that stuff that they started yeah. kind of weeding out then mm -hmm. in, you know, after like 1987. Yeah. It was, it was, it was as advanced as you get with that idea, making it more modern day mm -hmm. before it just psh, switched over. Yeah. Fright night. So that brings <laughs> us to the lost boys. Lost boys. This the, movie. Yeah. This movie. Is that how you're supposed to say the title, Sean? Are you supposed yeah, to whisper it? Fright night. I think it's the lost really boys one though. Are you supposed to whisper boys. it like that? Lost boys. The lost boys. <laughs> the lost boys. <laughs> Did you guys hear the story of how this movie came about? Tell us. Mm. Tell us, Colin. Please. Tell Regale us, us Colin. Yeah. There was, um, okay, so in 1985, there was a movie called The Goonies. And The Goonies oh, yes. was directed by a fellow named Richard Donner. Ah, uh, the wonderful Richard Donner. Who had also done Superman. Yep. And he does Lethal Weapons. Or he did. Well, he hadn't done Lethal Weapon at this point. Not at that he point, was, He no. was coming big off of the Goonies, was Goonies, his, yeah. his big success, right? He did The Omen also. Ah, who The nice. guy who produced The Omen produced this. Hmm. And so did Richard Donner. And Richard Donner produced <laughs> this. And they yes. survived. 
So there was a <laughs> yeah, no kidding. A screen <laughs> rating, the curse. Yeah. Well, there was a screenwriting duo, uh, James Jeremias and Janice Fisher, mm-hmm. and they wrote a story that was kind of an eighties the an eighties boys adventure. It was story kids though, in that with one, right? kids, yeah. and it imagined what it would be like if Peter Pan was a vampire. Mm. Right. And they're coming to Wendy at night. And like, you know, right. so there was all the characters, I believe there, except uh, the David character was named Peter mm-hmm. and everybody was a kid and the star was a boy and, you know, whatever. And Richard Donner was actually going to do this. But mm. he in the meantime, he fell in love with this other script called Lethal, Lethal Weapon. Weapon. Yeah. And yeah. so maybe I should, I'm going to want to do this. But he still he stayed no on regrets. as producer. Yeah, no regrets. <laughs> <laughs> no regrets from that. No, like, eh. Yeah, right. Yeah. That was probably a wise choice. Yeah. But he handed this one over and they gave it to Joel Schumacher. Yes. And Joel Schumacher was the guy who said, you know, I'll do like it, but I shit. want them to be teenagers, yeah. you know? I want to make it sexy. Yep. And so. That, he, leather, that sounds it, gross I'm in combination with I need leather to make it teenagers. <laughs> uh huh. But that's, so that's like the style of this movie, like all that is Joel Schumacher's mm. input then. Glitzy. Mm-hmm. Glitter. Yeah. There's glitter in this movie. Glitter. Did you notice There's that, folks? Like, now when you see this on Blu ray in super high definition, you can tell that the blood that comes out of the vampires when you stake them is full of glitter. Mm-hmm. Glitter. Mm-hmm. They're covered in glitter. Which is weird because, not that I'm a, a Twilight defender. Admit here. it. <laughs> hey, I'm not on trial here, okay, Sean? <laughs> that, but you, like, this is what this is a courtroom, okay? <laughs> <laughs> but like, Twilight gets a bunch of shit for having sparkly vampires. Sparkly vampires. It was Joel Schumacher did it first. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I don't think anybody blood. knew it. Like, I never knew. Like, watching yeah, it, I never. The definition wasn't sharp enough. <laughs> yeah. no, not at all. <laughs> you yeah. you tell. thought they were just like, shiny because yeah, they were just, wet. Yeah, yeah. They were yeah. Wet. I wonder if that's what they were going for, and they used glitter to do it. But now you can clearly see that it's glitter yeah, yeah. Like, dump so How much on them kill a stripper yeah. hooker so yeah. <laughs> or a stripper vampire yeah. <laughs> stripper hooker yes yeah. yeah, stripper vampires that's a movie right <laughs> It probably uh, already I already is. Gotta be. I know there's, it is. There's a Frankenhooker, so there's got to be. A, there's got to be. Yeah. Zombie strippers? Okay. Yeah. So, um, oh no, the stripper vamp, it's vamp that came out oh, in 1986. Oh, oh, okay. oh, yeah. Yeah. I think the friend turns into a vampire but he doesn't get cured from it. So there you go. Sorry. Uh, I mean, just, there's a parallel between this movie and near dark. They're both about guys who fall in with a gang. There's peer pressure to join and do what we do. Mm -hmm. Right. Which is being, you know, killer vampires. And by the end of it, they're looking for some kind of way with the help of, uh, you know, the female love interest to cure their condition and become Mm -hmm. returned to humanity. Mm -hmm. Who's the female love interest in this movie, Colin? Jamie Gertz. I officially start the Jamie Gertz Appreciation Club. <laughs> Are you the president? Uh, I am the president. Uh, Colin is the vice president. <laughs> mm-hmm. <laughs> Only because, I mean, the first scene where she's introduced at that, uh, yeah, I mean, it's a... At, it's the, a, at the saxophone event yeah. that's happening on the beach. Yeah. The, oh, my God, sexy sex the guy. The yeah. of the movie. <laughs> yeah. Was it? Oh, you see everyone Chains in the whole town was there. <laughs> the there were so town. many people. Chains and what, coconut butter lotion? They all just, they all have their differences. They had a cod piece on, too. Yeah, they all have their differences, true. but they come together for the greased up saxophone it, player. Yeah. Right. And this is like in the age of the, you know, I mean, Arnold Schwarzenegger is the number one, you know, movie star at the time. So the bodybuilder thing. Right. Body really builder, so yep. even your musicians in 1987. Chains. Are buff. Chains. Saxophone. Chains around his wrists, his neck. Yeah. Greasy Glistening. hair. Leather studded cod piece. Yeah. Yep. But are Very you folks out pants. there aware that the Lost Boys gen- or gave birth many years later to the Saturday Night Live viral <laughs> sensation of Sergio? Sergio. <laughs> Sergio. I don't know of Sergio. Oh, oh no. my God. No, I don't oh think my I do. God. You have they, to see, it's John no, Hamm. It's John Hamm. As that dude. As that dude. <laughs> yeah. And it's just like people, it's just really? people. You know, it's oh, this, shit. I got to watch no, this. No, this dude is cursed. This lady puts a curse on him. And his curse is Sergio. So any situation he's in, all of a sudden Sergio busts through his wall and blasting like the, sax. blasting yeah. the saxophone. Oh, you have to and look it's it the guy out. from the Lost Boys. It's out. like such a wonderful. fucking weird it's reference, so but funny. like, right? Wait, it's a deep cut. Just, yeah. Honestly, I, I love deep Lost cut. Boys, and I'm gonna I, make this. I remember sketch. watching this sketch, and I looked at my brother, and I'm like. Is this Lost Boys? Are they Lost Boysing right now? Mm-hmm. Amazing. Oh, you have to watch it. Not to be confused with the sex guy from George Michael's Careless Whisper video. Because right. he's not yes. nearly as buff or no. as decked out. <laughs> or as greased up. But, you know, it was the same yeah. time. I'm sure they were rival sex guys. They had to have been. I wonder what he looks like now. Because he still does this. He still yeah, goes around. Tim Capello? Yeah. Yeah. I know. Because all the... I mean, that's the other thing that makes this movie something is the soundtrack yeah. of it. 
where I remember it got shit at the time as being the MTV MTV vampires, mm-hmm. where they put the you know V as the first MTV letter. Vamp- yeah, 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 you know because it was it felt like it was so you know many music videos hooked sure. together, but like. I mean, I don't know about I you know, guys, it's, but it's like the brief. music is like ingrained in the it picture. It didn't feel it, that shoehorned like no, at all. No, it, like you said, no. ingrained in the picture. We were, I was watching the trailers for the two sequels to this movie today. And what are they called? It's like the, it's thirst? the, the tribe and, and the, the thirst. Tribe. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. And I was watching them and each trailer had the thou shalt not cry yeah. little sister song onto it. And he's like, D- does this song come with the rights to this movie? Mm-hmm. Like, does it have to be in? I'm like, yes, it does. <laughs> I think so. Yes, it does. You can't make a lost boy as bad as it may be. You can't make it without this song. Yeah. Because it is in remember there. Barry for the Lost Boys. Yeah. It's an official yep. Lost Boys thing. Even if nothing else in the movie, yeah. like you know, mm-hmm. feels any. Well, I guess they got Corey Feldman to come back. Yeah, they did. one of them yeah, or two. Of them. Yeah. And the other bandana. one comes back in the third one. The other frog brother. Yeah, and I think uh, Corey Haim, rest in peace, mm-hmm. made an appearance at the end of one of them. At the end of the first sequel. Of the did tribe. you watch these? I think I watched the first. One. I know. Uh, I think I skimmed through them. Or I, I always read about movies that I'm not going to watch. I always just read about them because I know I'm not going to watch the sequels Same. to the Lost Boys because they look horrible. Did but you I will watch? Just, you didn't watch these? No. Yeah. But I'll go I online won't. and just read what happens in them. Yeah. Because I'm like, oh, that's cool, or that, that sounds horrible. But, you know, it doesn't feel anything like. No, either. no, yeah. it doesn't. And it was look so like many it years like later too. Yeah. I remember when I was when I was working in the in the bookstore in the movie department when when the third one came out, whichever one that was, was that the thirst? The thirst. Yeah, when that one came out, like we got it, and like every week it was like a. Like it just dropped in price significantly, <laughs> and I was like, "Yeah, no one's ever going to buy this." That's no. and it's definitely doing poorly widely. If every week they're telling me, "Yeah, knock it down a little more." Well, it yeah. sucks yeah. too because now, like sometimes you see the edition that's like all three of them together, and it's like, yeah. I don't uh, want this. I don't. I don't want all of them. No, I just I'll go buy a single Blu-ray for more. <laughs> yeah, that's how I felt with the Mummy movies. They offered me the third one. I was just like, eh. <laughs> that's probably a wise choice. Did you know? Here's another little factoid about Uh-oh. the Lost Boys. You know how movies are reissued on VHS, Laserdisc, DVD, seven Blu-rays. I bet you own them all. Actually, I did for this movie. Yeah, I've been, I've been collecting yeah. it forever. But I can't think of many other movies that have done this. Maybe Halloween, right? Probably mm-hmm. Where the cover art has never changed. Oh, really? It's always always been the that? poster. That's, that's awesome. I, I, like that. I like that. I like that. I like that. Yeah. Good, because there's some movies. It's just like get some shitty ones. It's mm-hmm. Like just put it out quick. Yeah, you just need I money. I mean, it's it's a basic poster. Like, just works, man. But it must be like it sold the thing. You know, yeah. I mean, like mm-hmm. it sold the the movie well enough. And I suppose it's all big giant heads. But yeah. But I'm also su- I'm it tells you su- nothing about the movie. No, right. Nothing. But, but I'm kind of surprised. In like recent years, it hasn't been changed to make Kiefer Sutherland's face bigger mm-hmm. versus That's Jason true. Patrick's. Like I'm kind of surprised. The focus, though. Yeah. yeah. He's, the, he's the center. So. It's and we don't know who this guy is with the sunglasses. Yeah. On, so. No mm-hmm. idea unless you know who Jason Patrick is. You guys don't know unless who you're a big unless you're a big Speed, speed Two fan. Exactly. <laughs> That's where I know him from. Yeah, Sweet too. The only yeah. thing I know. Are you yeah. serious? Well, I know I know well, him from I'm Solar I'm Babies. Him and, uh, him and, <laughs> and Jamie Gertz. Him and Jamie, Jamie Gertz yeah. are hot off Solar Babies hot in this off movie. Babies. They were too. I don't yeah. ever watch Solar Babies. It's terrible. What, yeah, what I've is, heard what terrible else things about Batman? it. He was in. Uh, sure well, he was in okay. So he was in one of my. Well, he was in a movie after this that got him some attention, which was called. Uh, was it like it was Kiss Me Deadly or no, I'm getting this wrong. You don't even know the name. No, it's not that I, big of a deal. I'm not a big fan of that one. But I am like one of my favorite movies of the 1990s is a movie called Rush. And it's him and Jennifer Jason Lee and Sam Elliott and they're undercover drug dealer or drug uh, cops huh. in Texas with Greg Sounds Allman. Sounds good. Yeah, with music by Eric Greg Clapton, <laughs> which is where the Tears <laughs> in Heaven uh, song comes oh. from. Huh. But that's really good. Right. He was in uh, The Alamo. Nobody saw it. Uh, he was in a movie called Narc. Which Narc really Ray Liotta? Yeah. Okay. That's Joe Carnahan. Yep. Okay. That was gotcha. Jason Patrick. So he's been out there doing stuff, but sure, it never sure. seemed like he never became like a big star. No, he's never that quite that leading man. No, nope. I think well, despite I think what Sandra Bullock tried to do. Yeah. Right. I think he went and tried to do like I'm gonna become an actor. Like after Solar no. Babies and The Lost Boys, like that is where the you know it You're changes. saying he had confidence after Solar Babies? No. You're saying after he's like, I'm gonna go get it now. No, I think it was it was the like, one oh, the one, one I can't away. remember yeah. the noir that he did. I can't fucking remember. It's like four words. And it's like kiss me, kill me, kill me, kiss me, deadly something. Kill Damn me. it! No, after dark, my sweet. All right, <laughs> way different, but okay. <laughs> it's after dark, my sweet. Uh, yeah, I remember from uh, sleepers. Yeah, sleepers. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Sleepers about. Mm-hmm. 
Child molestation. Child molestation. Oh, Jesus. Wow, okay. Yeah, it's Kevin Bacon mm -hmm. and uh, Jason Patrick. Big, big pass on that one. Oh yeah. yeah. Just because nope. it's not a good movie, or just because it's got a fucking. It's not downer. a bad movie. It's just I don't I'm, I'm need to watch a movie about that. Sure. Is it one of those like you see it once and you never see it again? Yep. Kind of movies. Yep. Uh, okay. I mean, I'm all for depressing shit, but that mm -hmm. just sounds. You will Maybe never look much. at Kevin Bacon again the same way. He well, he did another movie called uh, The Woodsman, or mm -hmm. it was that's that good. Yeah. That's a good movie. Yeah. More child molestation. More child molestation. Yeah. Is Jesus, what Kevin I was Bacon. Going at. And he yeah, was in Beck, Mystic man. River, yeah. so that's kind of yeah. And yeah. Mystic River, yeah, yeah. that's what yeah. I was thinking. I was like, Kevin Bacon, calm <laughs> your tits. I mean, he, Beck, well, let's man. let Kevin Bacon do whatever he wants. Okay, yeah, he's making his clearly that's not wise, Sean. He's making bad decisions. But he's well, I mean, he's going to do Tremors series, so we'll just let him. So he gets a pass for everything. Yeah. I'm Yes. It's a, he's not actually molesting children, right? He's making movies. <laughs> no, but what is we it? know. Nah, nah, well, I'll leave it. Whatever. <laughs> Did you know? He's not on trial here either. No, it's very true. <laughs> but behind the scenes, Jason Patrick and Kiefer Sutherland both dated Julia Roberts at the same time. I leading did to oh, a snap. fallout between oh. the two of them because they were friends after this and oh. it all went south when one of them cheated. She Damn. got married to Kiefer Sutherland or they were engaged? I don't remember. And then she cheated with Jason Patrick or something. It was yeah. like one of them. Is yeah. She didn't huh. she also marry what's his name? The ugly dude. Uh, Lyle Lovett. Lyle Lovett. Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Lyle Lovett. Yeah. Yeah. That dude's Aww. odd looking. Yeah. 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 She's, She's now awesome. married to a key grip. Yeah, she likes normies. Oh, yeah. She doesn't like other famous people. She likes normies. Yeah. I was going to say, that's yeah. fine. She's like, then I, she's yeah. normal. I don't yeah. Know oh, yeah. 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 They got a couple kids to seem happy. They've been married mm -hmm. for a while. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, you don't go. have to put up with the dueling careers and yeah. Yeah. celebrity yeah. and whatever. You yeah. Do whatever you want, honey. I'm just going to move for this them. light. <laughs> yeah. I'll make sure you have really good lighting all the yeah. time. There you go. She's smart. She's oh, yeah. a smart lady. Yeah, I'm going to Yeah, I'll do this movie. Yeah. My husband can light it. Hire him to be the key grip. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. All right, so the Lost Boys. Yeah. Uh, well, okay. Do we accurate? Do we cover the soundtrack album for the people out there who are like uh, diehard aficionados? I of think the so because the uh, that, uh, Cry Little Sister song comes back like three times. Yeah. In this movie. Mm -hmm. so that's the, most yeah, of the soundtrack. The classic people are strange. The yes. doors. Oh, that's cover. yeah. It's very good. I yeah. like the way it's used in this movie. And Jim it's Morrison fun. does kind of appear in the movie. He does. A big giant, giant head. poster that has yeah. like a weird layering overlay with Jason Patrick's face. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Very for wild. Yeah. yeah. There, well, there, I've always thought that this movie. Like the the maybe it is because they overlay his face over Jason yeah. Patrick's, but it feels like the like the Lost Boys. Like if they could aspire to be someone, it's like it's Jim the Morrison doors. or the 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 myth of Jim Morrison, mm -hmm. right? Is yeah. like a vampiric yeah. kind yeah. of you know. Mm -hmm. He's yeah. like the Lord Byron of the '60s yeah. or whatever mm -hmm. that you know. Yeah. If they had the money to go to France and see his grave, they would. Right, yeah. Mm -hmm. If they could cross there. running water. Mm -hmm. All right, so did we talk about this? <laughs> the, the rules. You brought this up during the movie. Uh, yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah. The yeah, vampire yeah. rules. Oh, yeah, the rules. Yeah. Because some of them seem like they get uh, broken a little bit. Although they ex ex one's explained later on in the movie, but... The fact that uh, later on that Kiefer Sutherland and the boys just Don't get invited in. Don't get invited in. Even though they make such a big deal about it earlier yeah. on. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I don't understand that one. Unless it the counts, shocker. like, if you invite the head vampire in, well, they, it filters down to the rest of the, the vampires. He mentions that later on, that they can come in. It's just, if you invite them in, you have no power. But they, they only, don't invite, but they invite in. only Max in. Yeah. Not the they other They can ones. come in without being invited. They... You're not with me on that at no, all? No, no. Because no. <laughs> Max doesn't come in, and when he does, then he's, like, basically played off as normal. And Yeah, he's saying, invite me in so that when I come in and you try to do stuff, it's not going to work on me. Right, so why can the other vampires come in? Yeah, but Paul specifically How? said that's the blonde-haired vampire. <laughs> when he's by the, uh, the tub of water, specifically says, garlic don't work, boys. So it's like, well, garlic should work, but is it not working because... He's under Max's invitation umbrella. Right. That's what we're wondering. Why can they enter? <laughs> Just start over and go. With the <laughs> like, uh, we all got lost in this yeah, theory yeah. here. Start, why can okay. those, Why can they enter? Max comes in un invited. He's yes, invited. He's invited. So the garlic doesn't work because they invited him in. Right. The okay. other guys, they can come in. The garlic works because they were not invited. But they say the garlic doesn't work. Well, the holy waters of well, the worked holy on water he, work, yeah, in the bathtub. Right. It worked on him. Okay. Yeah. So Here's now, what this movie okay. could have used: one scene that over the sense. shoulder okay. of gotcha. Corey Haim looking at the comic book and a bullet pointed list of in that in that horror comic that he's given of what the rules are. 
Oh yeah. yeah. That's all you need. One scene of that, and we're clear. Because they know? do. Sure, well, they sure, do. Sure. They talk on the phone. At some point, we are going to have to mention the two Corys also. Oh, but yes. they do talk oh, yeah, on no. the phone all around the rules about you know what these rules are, kind of you know like. But I'm just trying to think of like was this a big deal with vampire stories prior to the Lost Boys? I mean, obviously it must have been with Fright Night because he goes to see Evil Ed. Right. Evil Ed knows all the. Yep. The rules of vampirism, but yep. the idea of like, well, I guess what the being invited in. Well, that's what was, I was wondering you know, when I wondered during the movie because um, it's kind of they make kind of a, a thing of it that he's I'm not going to come in until you invite me. Mm-hmm. Did any like was that known at this time? Like, were the rules set up for audiences to know that he had to be invited in? Like, would that be a giveaway? Is that point? a general knowledge for Right, for that people. a vampire has to be invited in in order to be able to enter your house. See, I mean, this is hard for me to say because I knew that stuff being a vampire right, right, but, as a kid. But the way, I mean, based on the way they present it in this yeah. movie, you and they build it up so much and spell it out, you mm-hmm. get the impression that this is for an audience that wasn't, you know, as well versed as it seems like we are now. We just, right. you know, everybody knows this stuff. Right. But yeah. back then, it's like we still had to no, explain it's, to it's you. It's a funny thing because you, you try to think back and you're like, that. it's just something you've always known, but how mm-hmm. did you know? Right. Yeah. Because of the Lost Boy. <laughs> Is that why? I mean, or, or Fright Night or one of yeah. those, you know, I mean, those, I mean, those would be the two influences that. This, well, is where, this is where I learn all my vampire stuff from. Well, I'll movies. tell you what, you know, another thing that you may have gotten that from might have been Buffy the Vampire Slayer, a show that I believe owes its entire existence to the Lost Boys. Because when you go looking at Buffy the Vampire Slayer, right? Mm-hmm. Uh, when they transform, they mm-hmm. change as they do in the Lost Boys. It's they have exactly same the same. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, mm-hmm. Spike. Is like a dead ringer, I think, for like the attitude of Kiefer the Kiefer Sutherland. Sutherland. Oh, yeah, absolutely, for sure. The absolutely. master, I believe, in the first season, lives in a, uh, a cave, mm-hmm. the hell under the Hellmouth. That yep. happened because of an earthquake I'm in. <laughs> San- I was gonna say it was a big quake of yeah. 19 whatever I the hell. Watch this show. Yeah. What? You've never seen Buffy? No. Okay. I've seen episodes of okay. Buffy, but it, I've it, never no, dude, it's, watched it's, Buffy. It's fine. I grew up with. Don't hate me. I grew up with the movie Buffy. I mean, so yeah. I, that's what I that's know. what Paul I grew Rubens up with. The yeah. show Five I didn't, minutes of Paul I didn't watch kicking a wall. That's <laughs> I didn't watch I didn't watch the show until like two years ago. Yeah, yeah no, same here. I, my wife I'm just very went recent to it, yeah. And watched all of Buffy. I think she even did the Buffy Angel stand. I did. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I did yeah, Buffy so did. Angel oh, wow. in cro- dedicated. I did yeah. Buffy Angel in chronological order yeah. the whole way. It mm-hmm. took me a long time, but yeah. I got through it. Mm-hmm. You were there. You remember? Yeah, oh yeah, because I did that too. You gave I me went, the list. Yeah, you helped that. me through uh-huh. it. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yep. But you got to watch them for the crossovers. Mm-hmm. But the movie, I was all about that's, the Buffy movie growing yeah. up, and that was Donald very, Sutherland and Donald mm-hmm. Sutherland, and that was very much in the movie. You have to be invited in. That was a big thing in that movie. <laughs> Invite me in. You're flying. Man. You're flying, man. <laughs> Luke Perry. Luke dude. Perry. Yeah. Oh, so good. David Arquette. David Arquette. Wow. <laughs> oh, there's a lineage of uh, Sutherland vampires. People give yep. the movie shit. Yep. I Maybe love they're it. real vampires. And Sutherland Possibly. was uh, also in Salem's Lot, the remake. Mm-hmm. Uh, he was the uh, Straker, the guy yes. who brings Barlow, which was uh, uh, oh god, Rutger. Oh, god. oh yeah. Yeah. And uh, the other son was in the tribe. What? Lost Boys, the tribe. What? There's another. There's, there's another, another Sutherland? Sutherland. Yes. What? A third Sutherland. A, is a third there's, Sutherland. There's a Sutherland. Is it, wait, is it Kiefer's kid? Um, I think. Does he have a kid? Oh. I think it's his kid. I assume. It can't be his brother. Three generations of Sutherland. Right, have been what? in vampire movies, and he's mm-hmm. the main vampire mm-hmm. in That's Lost suspicious. Boys, the tribe. Hmm. They're vampires. You know, They're there was supposed to be a definitely. Lost Girls. <laughs> yeah, there was. Which they were developing for a while, but they never got off the ground. I'd watch that. Yeah, I'd Schumacher watch that. was working on it. Why is that not a thing now? I'm surprised they're not doing it. I'd, I'd watch Bring it. it. It's, it's, it's going to be like bike, girl biker vampires or whatever. That'd be awesome. Yeah. yeah. A24, get on that. I'm in. <laughs> IFC, can someone. We, can we bring back Sergio? <laughs> yeah, yeah. He has to be the through <laughs> line. Yeah, at that point. Yeah. <laughs> uh, so the uh, Haim. Oh, yeah. Feldman. The Corys. The Corys. The Corys. Yeah. The I suppose, right. The Corys. Didn't they have like a TV show? Yeah, the two Corys. Two Corys, yes. It was kind of sad. Yeah, well, yeah it really was bit. sad to watch. I would not recommend. No. Especially now no. to go back and watch that. It's just like, Because nah. you're watching so like the final days of you're people watching, struggling. Yeah. Yeah. You're watching Cries for Help. It's yeah. really sad. Yeah, mm-hmm. it's not good. But back in the day. I watched it. They were like a force to be reckoned with. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah. With Dream a Little Dream. License to Drive. License to Drive. Oh, my God. Is that... 
Is that the three? Yeah, that's that's right. it. Uh, These three. Because yeah. did they do another one? It seems to me they yeah. saw another one where Corey I Haim I feel like another had a love scene What's with the one where Nicole on the, Eggert. Like, it was or, very uncomfortable. Or something. Or, ah, it's, it's a weird one. It's not Blown Away. They're, I think they might be in a movie called Blown Away. Or at least one of them is. <laughs> as they grew up. Wait, right? the, the, not the, the Jeff Bridges. Yeah, no, the Jeff no, no, Bridges no, no, bomb one? No. No, I think you're right. I think it with is Nicole called Blown Away. Edg- yeah. Was it Nicole Edgerton? No, Nicole Edgerton, yeah. She Edgerton. went on yeah. to Edgerton. like Baywatch or something? Mm-hmm. Yeah. 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 I just remember it was like Corey Haim and her had a love, they had scene, a love scene that was yeah. like... It just it's weird knowing you know people that are knowing seeing no, people you that you people? have seen as ch- uh, children <laughs> <Careful. kids>. yeah. <laughs> yep. as, as they grow up right yes. wow their career dipped off real hard by looking at their filmography yeah, here it's it's it. It. National Lampoon's Last Resort like if you have Last Resort in the title of a movie you're doing it's yeah fun. that's probably reflecting your yeah. actual career yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> woof. Yeah. <laughs> Woof. So basically, the Snowboard the Academy does not sound like a great think, movie either. I don't think Dream a Little Dream was like a big deal. But it had a sequel. <laughs> oh, yeah, it did. Are they in it? Yeah. Dream a Little Dream 2? They're in it. Yeah, oh, that's awesome. true. But License to Drive and The Lost Boys, I remember being like significant, mm-hmm. uh, you know, yeah. pop yeah. culture moments. Yeah. Because I mean, they, they, they each had individually, they had a couple more under their belt. There was Watchers, Corey Hamer, Watch, yeah. Silver Bullet, Silver yeah. Bullet, yeah, Silver with Bullet, Gary yeah. Busey, uh, yeah. yeah, or like Lucas and the Goonies, <laughs> Lucas. right? Yeah. Yeah. yeah, Friday the Thirteenth Part Four mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. and Part four. and Part Five. <laughs> Don't forget that. <laughs> that wonderful, yeah. wonderful movie. Um, and the Burbs. Mm-hmm. Back then. Oh, burbs. Yes. Just, we're just oh, gonna get some dudes God. coming. <laughs> Name dropping. Hey, Rob Smale. Yeah. Um, so good. Both of so them good. ended up being drug addicts. Mm-hmm. Yep. One yes. of them died because of it. The now, other one now tours. I went to a convention in Pennsylvania, Erie, Pennsylvania. Why so? Uh, I had a movie in it, oh. but I went there because one of the uh, key attractions was that they were going to be showing the Lost Boys on a big screen with Corey Feldman. Brooke McCarter, who plays uh, the Twisted Sister vampire, uh, okay. and uh, G. Tom Mack, a.k.a. Gerard McMahon. Yeah. Right. So I'm like, this is going to be awesome. So the whole time oh, that we're oh. there, because like everybody else is there, Sid Haig, or no, yeah, it was Sid Haig mm-hmm. and Ken Foray and like all the guys. Convention were regulars, yep. <laughs> and they're like, you know, but where, where's Corey Feldman? Like, what happened? Like, you know, like he got stuck in a plane or he couldn't get to whatever. He stood them up. Oh. Mm. He never actually showed up. Oh. So when it came time for the Lost Boys, it was Brooke McCarter and G. Tom Mack telling Awkward. stories. Because oh. <laughs> they were supposed to I have. I hope they like, were good stories. Eh, yeah, about like where the song came from sure. and working with jo- Joel Sh- Silver or Joel Sh- Schumacher. Schumacher. I and, wish uh, Joel Silver had worked on this. There'd be giant explosions everywhere. <laughs> yeah. Well, that I mean, cave would have blown like, the fuck up. That fireplace know? scene at the end. Whoop. Yeah, in, uh, the whole house would have gone. The entire yeah. city blown up. <laughs> well, in the uh, in Lethal Weapon, if you look, uh, because it was in Lethal Weapon was shooting while Lost Boys was in production or whatever. Yeah, mm-hmm. uh, there's a movie marquee. Oh yeah, it's a theater marquee Boys. that says Lost Boys, like surprise hit of the summer or something. Yeah, like that. yeah. 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 So he was like cross promoting. That's a Joel Silver movie. That was my tie in, bringing it all back. Richard Donner and whatnot. Do you feel that there are two movies that work in this one where the first half is all about Michael and the second half is all about Sam? True or false? Not really. I wouldn't say that separate. It doesn't feel, it feels natural that they would like the focus on that. Yeah. Unless, like, the focus stays with Michael if he decides to go down. The path of being with Kiefer Sutherland and his gang, I think. The fact that he wants to, like, deny it and he needs help doing that, he goes to his brother and the frogs. So I think it naturally goes in that, where it may feel like two movies, but I think the natural progression goes in that. It's not two movies. It's the tone, I guess, which is interesting, which is one of those things I've always liked about the movie, I think, is that shift where you have, like, the kind of, I don't know, the teenage angsty vampire romance. Yes. Mm -hmm. And then the, uh, you know, like the Goonies <laughs> adventure movie in yeah. the end, which kicks in on like giant explosions coming yes. out of fireplaces. And staking vampires and bleeding. Into stereos glitter. that explode. I didn't yeah. know they could do that. Like that a stereo <laughs> would explode that way, but you know. Like, yes. 
where everything it's just rock, explodes. It's rock, Colin. And, that's what happens. You just <laughs> yeah, in like excess, it's filled just with nitroglycerin or something. Yeah, exactly. It fucking blows the it's fuck up. It's the power up. of rock. It was metal. I don't know if in excess qualified. Uh, Colin threw up the horns for that one when he said metal, just so everybody knows. Well, I think they also do in the movie. Hey, right? hey, so, hey. Yeah. Richard Simmons is, or not Richard Simmons. Richard, <laughs> Richard Simmons. Gene Simmons is going to charge you for that. I know, I heard. Oh, He's I heard. Trying, to, trying to trying trademark to, Yeah, he trademark stopped. that. So was that the rock set? It looked more like you were doing Spider-Man. <laughs> I mean, it's close. Well, it's you gotta a hang hit. 10. That's, that's the, uh, you know. Yeah. Yeah. It's Sorry, it's like with the thumb in or out, right? That's yeah, I love you. Thumb thumb in is you thumb know, in. Yeah, that's funny. James Dio giving Gene it to Simmons people. is yeah. trying to trade. I like know this. Yeah, he's a fucking idiot. Yeah. <laughs> what are you talking about? Man's a genius. Genius. <laughs> Do you have a coffin with your yeah, likeness yeah. on it? No, you don't. You don't know that. <laughs> I know that, Holly. <laughs> if you, don't you know do, that. it's creepy. <laughs> but if Gene Simmons does it, it's fine. I mean, the man has licensed his image probably on a condom at this point, yeah. I'm guessing. So he is a bit of a license whore. A little bit. So he'll take, you know, whatever. They're hiding in there. Mm-hmm. Whore. I feel like I feel like it it was natural though that there's like the two yeah. separate brothers because you you have so much angst in the beginning you're kind of hungering for that like childlike mischief and Corey Haim is always yeah. around yeah. within mm-hmm. the Michael stuff at the beginning of the movie. So mm-hmm. it's not like he's just missing for that part. And then we go to him. He needs to get a hobby. Yeah. He doesn't do shit in this movie except comics. Creep, comic yeah. books and yeah. uh, vampires. Well, I mean, he's, he's like 13 he's years old. That's very true. Yeah. Like, he's he's what a pretty normal 13-year-old. 13 13 right, and they don't besides, have a TV. And it's summer. Yeah. Right. No TV. TV. Yeah. You follow yeah. your brother and you get paranoid about shit going on. But you live next to that awesome boardwalk. Go hang out down there. That place looks dope. I'd be down there every day. I don't think it's there anymore. No, it's there. True story. It is actually called Santa Cruz. Mm. And Santa Cruz was at one point the murder capital of the world. But uh, the the town didn't want, you know, their name associated with that. So they changed it to Santa Carla. But you can see that boardwalk also in the Dirty Harry film, Sudden Impact. The end takes place on the boardwalk. Yeah. Looks exactly the same. I think you can tour it now. Probably. Yeah. It's all good. Yeah. There were a lot of red flags with this group of uh, vampires. Why was he so desperate for these friends? That's what, Michael. Michael. Well, you he just want to just moved to a new, a new town. town. He wants to meet people. He's, so he it's takes the up girl. with the local ruffians. But it's yeah. the girl. The girl is what drags him into Jamie all Gertz. of this. Jamie Gertz. Really I'm sorry, but the first night he hangs out with them, they're like, "You're one of us, Michael. You're one Drink. of." I'm like, no. that sounds very culty. Yeah. Like, hard pass. I mean, no, <laughs> <laughs> I am not. This is like this is the '80s. You know, it's, it's the thing. I put, put. I'm. Hey, we weren't we weren't <laughs> young adults in the all. '80s. We don't know what you would just go off and do. You can talk, right, Colin? What would you just go off and do? All sorts of stuff. Exactly. Yeah. I have a man here who can tell us. It's been his time. A living traveling. witness. Yeah. Exactly. He knows what's going on. Yeah. This the, happened, right? The fashion a though, in this movie hadn't kind of leached over to us yet. So I always remember thinking, like, you know, because I mean, this was, a, I was, I think I was, I was probably Sam's age, right? Right. When I saw this movie. But uh, yeah, that was one of those things where you're like, yeah, he just wants, you know, he's trying to fit in, find a crowd. It's the summer. He just do shit. Mm-hmm. He wants the girl. Oh yeah, you just need. But this is my question about the whole evil plan of the head vampire Max, right? It's like he wants Lucy, the uh, mother, yeah, and he's gonna bring. She's the Wendy, which we didn't right mention. Uh, we right. Ma- Max and Lucy, played by Edward Herman and Diane Weist, mm-hmm. yes. the yep. lovable duo. Yep, love them. The lovable Diane mm-hmm. Weist. I feel like they're just like the sweetest people on the world. I love <laughs> them in a so vampire much. movie. I love them so. Much. I would watch them do like any movie together. Any movie. Much, yeah. I love those two. Yeah, mm-hmm. so sweet. She do a lot of stuff outside of like Woody Allen movies. Diane Weiss, she yeah. did. Well, she did Edward Scissorhands, and right. she okay. did. Yep. Um, right. She did that movie with uh, Brendan Fraser as the baseball pitcher. <laughs> Fuck was what? It? what? Fever pitch? No, wasn't what? it? No, oh, Fever pitch was Jimmy. Fallon. You're pulling out. Mm-hmm. <laughs> that's a that's a deep uh, one. Oh, and, uh, oh, is it don't Albert, it's not Albert oh. Brooks. Is it Albert? No, it's not Albert Brooks. It's uh, the other guy. I'm gonna fucking look this one up because this is the one. <laughs> yeah. This is the one I know Diane Weiss from. The, the little, the, the little. Oh, Little Man Tate. She was in Little Man Tate. Oh, yeah. Jodie Foster. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Huh. What the hell? Frazier. She's been a lot of stuff. She's taking care of the little kid. Okay, she's but therapy. But, Wasn't she a therapist? She was like she a was therapist teacher, in the baseball therapist, movie. whatever. I don't know. But this is my question about his master plan. When we first see this, uh, Michael taking mm-hmm. like Michael has an attraction to Star. Star is linked with the group. He follows Star. You know, and that takes him to the underground, you know, thing where he has to drink right. blood. 
Which I also like that bottle. scene is like, how do you get someone to drink blood just from a narrative standpoint? It's like, well, you convince them it isn't blood by having all these fake out. I'm like, what is the vampire right. power in this? They can suggest to you that you're eating maggots. Yes, the mm-hmm. power of suggestion. I've never seen yeah. this in another vampire movie. I don't mm-hmm. think where they until, can actually... like Until what we do in the shadows. So. <laughs> right, yeah. But, yeah. They per- but they specifically <laughs> mentioned they stole it from the Lost Boys. Yeah. 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 You're yeah. eating worms. Yeah. <laughs> right. Look at this spaghetti. Paschetti. Paschetti. You're, like your you're eating worms. You're eating yeah. That shit's hilarious. Watch that movie. Yeah, Everyone watch cool. that movie. It's it's a good good movie. movie. <laughs> or listen to our podcast after you do. Uh yes. our episode. Um Yeah, but I can't under, I I guess I'm trying to figure out like what his master plan was because like and also the the the, the fake outs that they have about Max where you have to kind of take suspicion away from him in right. the movie. So yeah. you have like the Lost Boys apparently drive by his house at one point and their motorcycles all revved up and the lights shining. Right. And you see Max all like freaked out and you never see what happens. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Are you supposed to forget that that scene happened by the next time we see Max? Because it's like, well, what was going to happen in that scene? If right. he was a normal dude. I don't know, because we get hints earlier on when they do enter his store. He's like, I told you not to be here. Mm -hmm. You learn later that it's just like, this is not where we meet. But you had the guard before that that kind of echoed the same sentence. Get off the boardwalk. Get off the boardwalks. Like, what are you doing here? So So it doesn't, yeah. yeah, And and maybe because because of stuff like that, maybe you think that the the boys terrorize him because they don't like him. Right. And I think that's maybe kind of what you're supposed to think Mm -hmm. during that Mm -hmm. scene. Like, they're just doing it. Because they did it to, they did it. Just before that, to, uh, to Michael, Michael and, and everybody, yeah, they just go around and terrorize people. So maybe it's not out of the ordinary. But that's another one where it's just kind of like this logic of this hold up. Is that a scene that's there just to have like a spooky moment at that point in the running time? And does it serve anything to the plot? It not really. It didn't need so. to be there. Unless they're trying to... I'm talking about either one of those scenes. Well, right? I, <laughs> right? I don't know what the first one does, where they do it to Michael and Sam. Because Michael should that. know those are the guys right. coming and what, not be freaked yeah, out. Yeah, I don't know what that accomplishes. I don't. also don't know if they're trying to push it one way or the other with uh, Max. Like, if they're trying to push you towards knowing that he's it, or take it away. Mm-hmm. It doesn't... It You know, they don't kind of tip either way in that one. They're just kind of a scene. Well, it looks like he's being threatened. Right, is exactly. the way it looks. But then, it, after that, he has a scene where he's either on the phone with or goes to, you know, um, dinner with uh, Diane Weist. Yeah. So you're kind of like... Yeah, I mean, was I supposed to forget that like he was menaced by vampires? Like, right. you know, right. so either he's dead or he's a vampire now or what? Right, or right? just fucking with him. And yeah, it's just somebody's really got to deal what with. They were I don't know what their intent was for that. those scenes hmm. specifically. I mean, it could go. Feels like it could go either way. Yeah, I don't know. Like it didn't. It, it wasn't. It wasn't like it punched a hole in the movie where it was just like, yeah. what the fuck was this? Like it. it no, it, it flowed okay. Yeah, but I don't it know the right. point. I don't know. Didn't jump out to me. Did you get the sensation that Max, as a vampire, was kind of like a late hour addition to the plot of this movie, the storyline? Like it was supposed to be Kiefer Sutherland all along, and they're like, yeah. maybe we should make it Max. Yeah. Mm. I don't know. Just because like the dinner scene when they when they're trying to. I felt like that was pur- that was purposeful, right? Because they have the dinner scene, it feels purposeful that yeah. they would have him revealed at the end. Yeah, but I mean, that's what I'm saying. You could fit right a dinner scene, you know, and right. stick and that in there. Just it could have been, it, it, it yeah. been additional. It could have been. Yeah. Mm. I don't think so. Like, I mean, maybe. Yeah. But, I've always yeah. tried to like figure out like what Max's psychology is, and I know sure. it's for a B movie, but, you, but you know. well, hey, you've had thirty years. You'd be like, mm, I wonder. So you've been stewing on this for a while, it would seem, and now you finally get to well, talk about just it. Just write a thesis on it, you know? Yeah. yeah. Well, this right. is him for, writing his thesis. Yeah, this, this, is is right this, is. this is my Lost Boys therapy. This is it. <laughs> we turn this in for a doctorate at the end. Did you guys know this? <laughs> like, we get a degree <laughs> from this. Sorry, a freak show doctorate. Yeah. Igor's there transcribing all yes. of our past Thank you, episodes Igor. Yeah. for the. It. Does, is he like bookkeeping all of our yeah. grades too? Yeah, okay. he, he has yeah. little reading glasses. He, it costs a awesome. lot to keep him in pencils, by the way. <laughs> but I mean, how old do you think this guy is? And what was I he mean, doing before? You. you know, yeah. This is okay. Like you look at the way this guy dresses, which is very like very up Phil with the Collins, times. you know, or whatever. Uh, <laughs> yes. Nineteen old up Collins, jacket yeah. sleeves and whatnot. My favorite look. His apartment is decorated with a juke, bo- a neon jukebox, and neon stuff, and like he's very much a product of the. So 1980s. you're saying he's living the life? He, is what you're saying? Yeah, he's driving Corvette too. 
Mm-hmm. Was it a car? I don't know. I wasn't paying attention. I mean, sure, yeah. he drove a nice car. Mm-hmm. He has a nice house. It's by the beach. It's like right there. Oh, like a, had like Who a knew that video stores like motor. were? Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> they, they were the rage. Gave you that much, you know, of, uh, Colin, financial you security. Know. Well, I love Grandpa's house too. I don't know that what the hell fun. this guy okay, does. That house is huge. Yeah, huge. like like when uh when Corey Hamfors gets there, he's like, oh, this house is gross because there's taxidermy and animals everywhere, which whatever. But the house is so fucking huge. Who gives a shit if there's Taxidermy <laughs> animals everywhere. You can get away from yeah, them. You got it in your own little room. The yeah. Texas Chainsaw Massacre. Room. Yeah. Which means. Also, yeah. Oh, go ahead, go ahead. I was going to say, also, it's apparently built for uh, the destruction of vampires. Mm-hmm. Yes. Based on the last joke of yes. the movie and just the way everything looks, it is made to ward off vampires or at least fight them when they mm-hmm. come in. And which brings us to the fact that Grandpa's the best character in this movie. <laughs> I love wonderful. the grandpa. <laughs> I wish I had a grandpa like that. Holy right? shit. Great. Dope awesome. ass retro car in the garage has like never been driven, right. basically. You're it's carrying so cool. unconscious people up to your room. He's yeah. like, fill up the car. Yeah. <laughs> cool. Yeah. He's very cool. Well, he knows what's going it. on. Yeah. He d- yeah. That's very All true. Like, you can look back on it. <laughs> like, that does kind of open the, the, the mythology of the movie up. It's like, what in the fuck has grandpa been doing all this time? Like, he, again, seems to me um, to be a more interesting character than Max. Or uh, there's more to Grandpa. Uh, yeah, there grandpa, definitely yeah. is. Where Max is like, because I mean, I get that the Lost Boys act like children. You know, they're it, because I mean, it seems like most of the victims in the movie are the surf Nazis that they get into a fight with on the carousel in the first scene of the movie, and they kill them throughout the rest of the movie. Yeah. It's yeah. all those same guys. Yeah. yeah. So because of, yeah, everything. it was like we're gonna go pick on them and yeah. kill them and you know Fuck do all this them. stuff to them. But Grandpa seems to be like he's got a history that, you know, spans beyond the past, like, you know, 19 years or whatever. Yeah. Where's the prequel? <laughs> he lost, also has a happening boy. A, a, lost a comic grandpa. book somewhere. He also has a happening oh, sex life. He's always yeah, talking yeah. about yeah. going on dates. The Widow Johnson. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Her nickname. Which makes that scene so much better now that you, like, know all this about Grandpa when he's like, when, <laughs> when he asks about her husband, he's like, would you stuff him too? I'm like... <laughs> Oh my God! He could have. He might have been a vampire. <laughs> it, just, it opens up so Which many doors. Great! I love it. That's why she's a widow. Yeah. It's yeah. wonderful. I love it. I love it. I love it. <coughs> like this is just something he's been there so long. It's just something he does now. Yeah, yeah. Like, yeah. He's a now secret he's vampire gone. hunter. <laughs> he's just accepted the reality of the situation yeah. and is just like, yeah, whatever. A secret vampire hunter. Oh, it's great. I love it. Well, yeah. but this also brings to mind another question. Like watching this movie, right? Like, uh, do you get the impression that the Frog Brothers are doing this on a regular basis or is this their first time at bat as vampire killers that's hard to say because it feels like when they go to stake the vampires in their cave like they're all for it they're, they don't show hesitation when they they're don't just hesitate stab. no no hesitation no. when they're gonna stab that Alec- when they're gonna stab Bill S. Preston Esquire in the yeah. chest <laughs> yeah. they yeah. show no hesitation and they just go for it so I mean I feel like they're very confident that's what exactly they're doing. what I was thinking watching this I'm like, like this does not feel like their first kill I could, I could understand where it feels like they they really feel like like there are vampires here, but this could be their first kill. But they show no hesitation, mm-hmm. so it feels like they've done it before. And he and when he describes that um, a vampire I mean, can it, they die differently, yes. I'm like, how else would he know well, that? He's getting it from the comic books. Uh, that's right? very like, true. is that a common also, thing? I'm, that's, I'm, also, that's I'm where just, there was a fine line, like what's from the comics and what's from experience. Right. But could also be the fact that they're very confident is that they stumble on four guys hanging from their feet in a cave. <laughs> right. Like, once you stumble on that, you're pretty like, all right, there are vampires. I'm pretty sure I can kill this guy and be fine. Yeah, I, yeah. So yeah. that may be where their confidence comes from. I kind of didn't buy the part where they're like, we don't know which one's the leader. I'm like, look at the way they're dressed. Obviously, right. it's fucking right. Kiefer Sutherland. Yeah, that's probably that's the one probably in the that Yeah, that's probably that one. Yeah. But they're just like, let's kill the small one. He's closer. <laughs> they kill the smallest, dumpiest looking one. Like, obviously, he's not the leader. They're like, we'll I mean, just kill them all. Look at that but hair. yeah. Look at that mullet. That curly yeah. mullet. Uh, that curly, uh, uh, curly, greasy mullet. <laughs> Colin, <laughs> tell me you did not have a curly mullet. Did you have a mullet? Uh, you did. Yeah, he did. He hesitation. Yeah, and all sorts of different. Yeah. Oh, oh, my, my just calling over the years. I gotta find like some pictures. Yeah, yeah. So I looks the see same, these. just different hair. Fro, <laughs> mohawk, mullet, mullet. Mm-hmm. Danzig, <laughs> flock of seagulls. Uh-huh. Flock of seagulls. Oh, never had the, the, never had the cow, flock, flock of seagulls. seagulls yeah. <laughs> the ponytail. Oh, oh shit! Yeah, yeah, oh, yeah. Shit. calling in a ponytail. Did you have like a George Michael earring? No, no, no. Never no. went for the no earrings, still, no tattoos. Nope. Yeah, I know. I mean, when you're on drugs, you can't uh, just walk and get those things. <laughs> yeah. Sure, you can. That's when it's the best that's idea. The best time. Yeah. Yeah. Like, yeah. Wow. Like, that's when you wake up with an earring the next yeah. day. Right. Yeah, 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 yeah. True. Or a tattoo of an earring. Let's yeah. Go for all yeah. 
Uh, <laughs> but I mean, I don't know. I, I guess I always took it that these guys, these kids were like, you know, reading up all this stuff. They were vampire experts. Mm-hmm. They knew that there were vampires in the town, yeah. but that could yeah. be just carried over. You know, they're just, they live there. So they know yeah. like everybody who lives there apparently knows it's not that big of a secret thing yeah. that there are vampires there and they're getting ready to, you know, right. So it very well could be kill the first kill. Yeah, maybe. But, but maybe yeah. they've been doing it before? Maybe. And maybe this is like a, you know, like They're a movie or comic book that should the, have existed. The tiny Stallone <clears throat> that is Corey Feldman. <laughs> yeah. The more, when you said that, I'm like, You're giving really, too much credit by Stallone. saying that. He's, like, he's doing Rambo. He's trying. Rambo he's really trying. Because he's trying in that deep voice, that fucking <laughs> Rambo. Yeah. He wears that same outfit and bandana through the awful sequels too yeah he does it does he yeah it does not age well it does not look right it does not look right to see a 30 something year old Corey Feldman wearing that out same outfit the third one is even worse it doesn't look right to see Corey Feldman doing anything these days with his band what's it called have you seen that yeah everybody's seen this my buddy went and saw him in concert he rides out on a Segway and just does his shit he looks like a Michael Jackson Jr. yeah at this point it's poor man's lost hey whatever hey if he's happy whatever I yeah. saw him on Dr. Phil. He's not happy. It's not. Yeah. I know, but it's, he's got. It's the. There was a lot of abuse in his childhood. And Corey Haim's death was really hard on him too. Really so. hard. Yeah. yeah. Oh yeah. Poor Corey. <laughs> well, that kind of brings us <laughs> <laughs> on a downer note. Yeah, no, I mean, uh, do we any other stray observations or uh, uh, thoughts on the Lost Boys before we wrap what this do we up think and, of, and do? Uh, we're going to do like individual reviews here after we do uh, uh, Igor's mailbag. Go ahead, Sean. What do we think of our uh, vampire transformations? Like as far as makeup and prosthetics oh, go, yeah. like, awesome. what our look of our vampires in this movie? Because we get over the years uh, a varied uh, look of vampires. What are mm-hmm. our thoughts on this one? I think they look pretty damn good. I, I like yeah, it. I, I like cool. it. I like oh, just yeah. the, like eyes, fangs, maybe slight alter- alterations to like skeletal structure. Yeah. Nothing too great. And this was the first time I ever saw anything like this. Yeah, yeah. yeah. this was you awesome. Seen Fright Night before well, was, this. Yeah, was this? I, I saw, saw this first. Oh, okay, yeah. Yeah. Fright Night had the full on. Right. It did. Yeah. And also, I noticed that this is a thing. So Greg Canham's the guy who did the makeup for this. He mm-hmm. also did. He did Fright Night, yeah. and he later okay. did uh, Bram Stoker's Dracula. And he, before that, he had done the Bark at the Moon uh, Ozzy Osbourne video, ah. which I think is what got him all these jobs. Sure. But uh, wait, did he do Fright Night? Maybe he did Vamp. Anyway, or all of them. Maybe he was the vampire guy in the 80s. I hope so. Uh, it's not the canines. Give me the vampire you notice guy. that? Yeah, I liked that. Yeah, I like oh, that is it, not? is it the ones closer? It's the ones closer. closer. Yeah, yeah, which yeah. he does again in, in Bram Stoker's Dracula, right, because if it's, I yeah, remember. It's creepier yeah, if they're this like, if they're, closer, they're right up yeah. front. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Do I we, liked that it was just like an exaggeration of Features you already have, right? You know, with because, the prosthetics, yeah. yeah. Right, Kiefer Sutherland always it's he's kind of got a long, sort of cheekbony face, and he already has a that. dramatic mm-hmm. face, right? Yeah, he does. Yes, yeah. That's he does. Yeah, and, yeah. So they, and they just, just exaggerate. Just like yeah. we know what to do with that. Yeah, but it's, it's the Buffy look, right? Mm-hmm. Like Buffy yeah. ripped off that. They really you know, did foreheads and cheekbones. Just, it keeps it, it keeps and it simple. Joss Whedon loves this movie. Uh, yeah. <laughs> he has to. It keeps it simple, which I like as far as vampires go. We don't need mm-hmm. to go too crazy. Right. Uh, Fright Night goes a little farther, but it's it's very good. And I love what they do in Fright Night. Um, uh, do we get any actual uh, neck biting? It's all pretty no. cr- uh, like crazy like killing in this movie. No slow neck biting and sucking in this movie. We don't get that. No, There's he, the he scene gets that... close. Uh, yeah. Max gets close. Very close. Which, that was another thing. I was trying to figure out if there was any other ties or if I'm just reading into this, but I, I was thinking about their names, and I was wondering if those were nods to previous Dracula movies. Like... Max Dwayne? I don't think Dwayne is. No, but like, <laughs> Dwayne, like, Paul, Marco, I could, and David. Marco. Well, I was thinking like Ma- Dwayne would fit in in your dark. I don't think there is a Dwayne, but it would fit with that. I was thinking, would, yeah, well, I, I was agree. thinking like Max, Max Shrek, Nosferatu. Uh, sure. Oh, Lucy's gotcha. from the original Dracula story. Yeah. Yeah. I was, tr- I couldn't really we find thinking, any other ones, yeah. but I was like, I wonder if those are subtle nods. See, I wondered Maybe. if Thorn was because it was yeah. Richard Donner and Harvey Bernhard. It yeah. was, so it was the Damien Thorn. Yeah. yeah, yeah. I mean, that mm-hmm. makes sense. Not yeah. vampire, yeah. but. I yeah. mean, and then obviously Nanook is. Can we the, talk about our dog? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I was gonna say. Like, some... Let's let's not go with them unmentioned in this movie. There Nanook some... like takes one for the team and tackles yeah. a fucking vampire yeah, in this movie. He's they awesome threw a dog, dog at a dude in this movie. Well, that because that dog was fucking real. And Thorn plowing through that fence, that yeah. white picket fence, like that's yeah. just like oh shit, like. <sighs> 
I have not seen a dog on screen that scary since Don't Breathe, probably? Do- don't mm, Breathe at yeah. a dog e- uh, as scary. He's busting through some shit. Yeah, yeah. 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 Was... That dog will not stop. And in this no. movie, Thorn's not stopping for anything. When like... I was like 10, I got bit in the face by a dog that looked just like Ooh. this one. Oh, yeah. so like it's... Thorn? Damn. Yeah. yeah. Looked just like Thorn, yeah. In the face? Uh, yeah, I have a scar on my eyelid right here. Still from that. In the eye? Yeah, he oh bit me god. in the face. <laughs> oh my god. Yeah, it was, was not trigger- a fun day. <laughs> was this triggering for you, Sean? Did you feel uh, a little triggered? bit? I'm okay. <laughs> I've gotten over it. I'm that okay why with you, dogs. Is that why you have cats? That's yeah. <laughs> probably. That's why I it's like, this fucking cat never bit me in the face. Do you yeah. fast forward through that scene when you it's watch like, this on uh, your own? You're like, I don't want to no. see this. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's a traumatic experience. I'd rather not relive it. I got bit in the face by the When we do our documentary on Hollywood animals, we'll definitely talk about Nanook and Thorn. I'll do scorpions and monkeys. <laughs> yeah, that's, I'll stick with that. If there's cats, I'll do the whole cat part. Yeah. I'm fine with that. Yeah. But it is like one of those movies where you actually have like a dog character who feels like one of the kids. Yeah, definitely. You know? yes. Yeah, yeah. I like he gets that. a lot of screen time. Mm-hmm. Really does. He does, and, he's a, <laughs> and he gets he's called, called he's a good out boy. Like a lot. Yeah. yeah, he's just a good boy. He's yeah. a good boy. He's just hanging out in the back of the car, <laughs> leaning against the window. Like, mm-hmm. uh. Yeah, I have it written in my notes. There's so many cute dogs in this movie. There are. Yeah, <laughs> Thorn for his vicious disease. Yeah, cute dog. Like so. for the first third of the movie, he's not doing anything vicious. Yeah, he's, he's just like hanging out. Hanging out. Like, yeah. Yeah. He's a yeah. guard dog. Like you're not a hellhound. You're a good boy. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yes. Until he tries to eat Diane Weist. Well, right. You know, she for no reason. There. She was yeah. on his property. Well, she, hey, he's guarding. <laughs> yeah. Right, he's got to guard his Hey, he did have a posted sign. That's he true. did have a no, posted right. sign. Yeah. 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 He was you trying to keep warned. people safe. Yeah. You were yeah. 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 Stay away from my house. vampire. It's like, I don't want to eat you, but I will. Yeah. My lair. I don't know if you have it in your notes there, but uh, I'm sure you could play a drinking game based on the number of times they say, Michael. Michael. It's like 80 something, I think. Michael. It's It's too much. It's It is It's amazing. Yeah. Amazing! Like I never it's, noticed it's like, until it's like, recently. It's like, it's like the trance. No, it's They're that is, to get that is one of my biggest movie pet peeves is when they say someone's name that much. Because seriously, how often do I say your names? Like right. really, when I'm talking in to a you, real conversation, rarely. Yeah. yeah, it bugs the shit out of yeah. me. And like, if you ever meet someone where you ever get like the gut feeling that they're just being disingenuous to you, they it's because like one of the triggers of that is that. They're saying, saying your, name your name a bunch. You know what I'm saying? That's something that, that like, oh, yeah, like you ever work customer service and someone reads your name tag and they're like, oh, Holly. Yeah. And they say, so Holly, a million yeah, times. No. It's the most annoying thing ever. Not that. Yeah. It sucks. <laughs> like, unless I'm it's, trying to get your attention, I'm probably not right. going to say yeah. your name. You know? It's just this side of, hello? Yeah. Hello? Yeah. <laughs> it's that close yeah. to it. It's like, oh, Jesus. Yeah. Can we stop doing this in movies? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. <sighs> Uh, it's too much. So we come to Raffles and be like, Molly? so Holly, yeah. what do you think about this movie? I think Holly? You. <laughs> Especially like the sleepy way that like Jamie Gertz says like my uncle like a million times. Yeah. It really was really great. I know you guys are we're saying sultry. No, I know you're all awesome. sleepy because she's napping this whole movie. I know she's you're all sleeping about, for half of yeah, this movie. I know you're all about her, but her we voice like annoys the shit out of me in this movie. <laughs> Does it just like trigger you to because it, it makes you think about Seinfeld? I can't spare a square. The I can't episode spare she was on. <laughs> <laughs> well, there's also the we we go back to vampire movies. There's the Bill Paxton, uh-huh. Jamie Gertz twister. I know. Oh, that's, yeah, whole, that's, all all I, you know, that's all I think about when I watch it's this all movie. Connected. All I can see is her saying, "We got cows." <laughs> <laughs> that's all I can think we got about. Cows. <laughs> <laughs> Jamie Gertz. Oh man. Oh, mm. Jamie Gertz. Is it really six degrees of separation of Jamie Gertz? Maybe. I mean, where is she? Uh, this is about as far as Maybe. it goes. Yeah. For me. Like, she was on a ends. sitcom for a while. Yeah. It's yeah. Still standing. Uh, yeah. yeah. Still was standing. It? Still standing. Uh, it was. I don't know. Nobody it was an early it. aughts sitcom. Yeah, all right. <laughs> yeah, that makes sense. so yeah. there you she go. Was the mom. Those early aughts. Yeah. Whatever. Yeah. Mm-hmm. All right. Well, it's good it's to know that she's still working. She's still yeah. working. She yeah. still does things. Mm-hmm. Yeah. We'll all always right. have so Lost Boys. Should we summon our mailman and uh, so. stick with us after we read the mail and we'll come back? Uh, so. so Igor, Igor, bring us the mail. Masters, masters, the mail. I've got the mail. So many letters. Our followers are rising, rising. Why, thank you, Igor. Thanks, Igor. Oh, he's got. He's wearing those little fake vampire teeth. Mm-hmm. He, gets, he gets in the like the spirit of everything. Yeah, everything yeah. We do. That's weird. Take him out. It's weird. Yeah. It's weird. It's very weird. Uh, so, again, if you would like to write in. Actually, we would like you to write in more probably than you want to write in. I mean, probably yeah. at this point. I, I'd like yeah. it, you know? Yeah, yeah, I would love it if yeah. you wrote in. Yeah. How can they get a hold of us on Facebook? Facebook.com slash Saturday Night Freak Show. What about on Twitter? At Sat Freak Show. And by email? Saturday Night Freak Show at Yahoo.com. Or on Instagram? 
on Saturday Night Freak Show. First of all, Jonathan Holt writes in and says, I once met the two Corys at a horror con in oh, New, shit. New Jersey during a rough patch in their friendship. That's oh, really oh, it's a good story. Awkward. <laughs> he says, after getting a photo of Sam and the Frog Brothers signed by Feldman, Feldman, I waited in line to meet Haim, wondering if it was okay considering their rocky relationship and if he would rip up the photo after seeing it. He says, ultimately, Haim accidentally screwed up his signature and actually did rip up the photo, not knowing it was signed by the other, by <gasps> Corey oh, Feldman. No. Oh, no. I'd cry. He said he felt, uh, oh. Haim felt terrible and gave him a new photo for free and a huge hug, and the con got Corey Feldman to re-sign the photo. It's still one of his oh. favorite con memories, and rest in peace, Corey Haim. Oh, that's peace. awesome. That's a nice story. And uh, Michelle6175 <laughs> writes in and says, I listened to the soundtrack so much, the printing wore off. <laughs> After Purple Rain, it's a fa- it's a fave. I fell in love with Jason Patrick and Diane Weist because of this movie. Yeah. I was already a fan of The Doors and love People Are Strange and didn't mind this cover. It's your cat. It's a good then. cover. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I like this cover. I think I've heard this cover probably more than the original song. Yeah. The Echo and the Bunnymen? Yeah. Well, Michelle, you're not alone because I have this soundtrack. Like, I, know, worn. I had it on tape, in the, uh, oh, like yeah. cassette tape, awesome. and wore the shit out of it, and now have it on digital because it's going to you know, have it all. That's well, the only thing you can have it on at this point. I have point. the CD, I think, like uh, the physical version there, too. No vinyl? No, vi- yeah, no, no vinyl. Is there a vinyl sure release of the Lost Warner Boys? Brothers. If it is, Sean's going to buy it. Yeah. If it is, and it's only going to be three tracks long. <laughs> yeah. No, it's like ten. Oh, I'm sure it is, yeah. but it's only three tracks. I mean, come on. There's the Lou Graham from Foreigner, yeah. uh, Lost in the Shadows. Yeah, oh, you gotta have that. The, in excess, uh, Sir, yeah, the that was Sergio good. song. In excess, yeah. In excess is on this because Joel Schumacher did in excess music videos before. Yeah, this. Yeah. yeah. Or he yeah. traded. Or actors, yeah. I think like I'll direct your video if you do the song. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Probably yeah. Yeah, something like that. I actually saw. Um, <clears throat> there's a group on a YouTube. It's like this. It's a music school or something for kids, and this guy gets them to do like you know all these like hard rock songs. Good. But they did uh, the fucking Sergio song. <laughs> did they? <laughs> I still believe, and it's like yes, these kids doing it, awesome. and it's hilarious. It's great because they do you know, and there's a kid playing saxophone and all. Nice. Will it? Will it's like it, a music oh, yeah, school. Steven that. something. Will music it be school? found on our Facebook page? I think we should well, post it right? probably yeah. for your enjoyment, listener. <laughs> yeah, Dear we'll reader. put it up there. The Steven something I can't remember. Oh, we'll have it on there. So that brings us to our final reviews, and we're going to start tonight with. Sean! Thank you. Everyone should yell at me. <laughs> oh, you want us to yell boys. your name? It's not going to make you uncomfortable. <laughs> no. It's, hey, Colin, you should join in as well. Oh. Sean! Thank you. <laughs> All right. I'm good. Um, Lost Boys. I mean, you know, talk about, like, seminal movies. I mean, I think this is definitely one of them. As far as vampire movies, it's, you know, it's Fright Night and the Lost Boys. Like, I mean, that's what I grew up on. So I have... I have a great affinity for this movie. Um, uh, I borrowed it from Colin, I think, not too long ago, and I think it, it took me a while to watch it. But uh, I, I yeah, <laughs> which is you know what I tend to do. But uh, watching it again, like you know, uh, I, I think uh, having not watched it a lot when I was younger, and again we I saw this on TV when it was run. So, but watching it again, like I think I fell in love with it again. Like I think it's a really, uh, it's definitely a really good movie. Again, I like the. Um, the simplicity of like the vampire effects in this movie. Um, I, I think the, the characters are fun. Um, I kind of like the whole concept of it, you know, ever moving to a small town you know, murder capital of the world. And there's just the reason for vampires. Um, it's, uh, it's a movie that will always stick with me again. It's in line for, uh, for me who I don't particularly like too many vampire movies. Um, this one is definitely, it's, you know, uh, top two vampire movies for me. Um, I really like this movie, and I would definitely recommend it. Yeah, I totally agree. I, I don't really dig vampire movies very much either. They're not my thing. But uh, And I came to this movie like late in life. I didn't see it for the first time until I was like 19 or 20 years old. And, Damn! Yeah. And uh, I saw it like on cable TV. It was the first time I saw it. But like the, the first time I saw it, and even tonight when we were watching it, the thing that always impressed me was the production and the set design is so detailed. Like every scene is crammed full of tchotchkes. Like they have shoved Such junk in. They have shoved junk in. In every corner of every set that they are in. <laughs> and that, I mean, like, it looks huge budget. Like, I know it had a good budget, but, like, it doesn't, nothing about this movie looks cheap. Yeah, and when I, you're I, I, I producing your movie. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 
Like the like literally the only thing it's missing to say we have a huge budget is a Joel Silver explosion. It's like you know? but they get but they get, <laughs> they get as we close do. as they get. Yeah, they, they do really do with, with blood and house yeah. water explosions. Like we didn't even mention that. And the like, black smoke cloud too. Yeah, yeah. Like, yeah. There's yeah. blood coming out of everything in this movie. <laughs> That's the Joel Silver explosion, mm-hmm. except the Joel Schumacher explosion. Yeah. Yeah, I like that this movie, like, it's a vampire movie, but it has, like, such a pop culture twist on it that mm-hmm. it's much more digestible for people that don't like vampire movies. Just a couple things about the movie overall is, like, that I noticed when we were watching it. It's, like, towards the end, Corey Hames wearing a shirt that says Born to Shop. Not really sure what... <laughs> oh, is that what the red shirt and, said? Yeah. yeah. I was wondering. And I was yeah. like, yeah. I'm not really sure what we're supposed to take from <laughs> this, right. but... I it's mean, like his you, mom sure, shirt that sure, yeah, you are. Because it was yeah. like he was sleeping in. It's like a, it's like a sleep shirt. shirt, you know. And your sleep shirts are never like your greatest shirt, right? Exactly. That's why you sleep you in them, you know. Yeah. No one will see you in it. Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Except the entire world saw me yeah. in that shirt. So. <laughs> and then he also had a poster for a movie called Reform School Girls in His Room, which I've actually <laughs> seen. Mm-hmm. Not a good movie. Uh, would not recommend. But I understand why a boy of his age would have it on the wall. Gotcha. In his room. What okay. I don't understand why a boy of his age has the Rob Lowe poster. A, a sexy, <laughs> not just a like a sexy, sexy Rob, Rob, Rob Lowe. Like, yeah. like, yeah. It's one of those it's where it's like a tank, the pulling on a tank top one. I, I, I have, yeah. to, yeah. I have yeah. to assume it's because He's the dude, idol. The dude like, directed. Be no, because the dude directed He stayed almost fire. Yeah. Yeah. He's like, we're going to put this up. Did you just put it? I never, I don't know. My parents didn't want anything on the walls, right? I never had her decorate a room. Not that I would have put up a Rob Lowe poster, but I assume, yeah. like, was Team Beat like a thing? Well, I don't know if, like... Yeah, Team Beat was Yeah, oh, yeah, it was a thing at yeah, that point. They would yeah, just have, for po- sure. like, yeah. centerfolds. Oh, yeah, oh, so well, they had- yeah of the, <laughs> yeah. the latest I had those summer. on my yeah. wall. Oh, yeah. I totally had those on my yeah. wall. Yeah, you just yeah. pop them out of the, out of the staple. Molly right, Ringwald 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 also, Yeah, he did have a big Molly Ringwald poster. But boys don't typically have... a Teen Beat. They don't. They don't have dudes. Teen Beat. I did not yeah. subscribe to Teen Beat. I <laughs> yeah. had Fangoria. Boys and, don't you know. get Teen Beat. He right, read right. comics. Colin like, had the latest Jason that, on his. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> I would have if I was oh, it a yeah. sexy Jason. <laughs> he's wearing right, like he's booty aren't, shorts. Aren't, aren't they all yeah. sexy Jason? I mean, yeah. come on. He's wearing like he's booty just, shorts and a muscle he's tank. tank. He's, yeah. he's doing like naughty peekaboo face. You know that might or be a, someone make that fan art, please. Hanging down. That might be a market. Oh my god! Because I don't think I've ever pin-ups. seen that. Horror yeah. movie pinups. Why are we not doing this? There, there was an artist that did a calendar of them like a year oh, or two okay. ago. Oh, I'm sorry. She, um, yeah, I'm just say so. But I mean, like she More illustrated them, us. so yeah. you know. But yeah, no, they're really great. Your review. I'm sorry. Okay. <laughs> I don't want to see a sexy Jason's mom. <laughs> not Jason's mom. <laughs> um, but yeah, the set design was really well done. Um, it feels expensive. It feels. Um, it, it's also a great time capsule. Um, and like the acting is solid all around. Like there's no one that's really kind of like dragging the rest of them down at all. Um, Edward Herman, I think, doesn't ever age. It seems like I feel like everything I see him in, he looks exactly the same. May he um, uh, yeah, yeah, until he died. Yeah, yeah. The only difference is that he's not wearing a bow tie in this movie. It doesn't feel right. Yeah. It, feels it feels wrong weird. to see him it wear a necktie. Weird. You know. Um, but yeah, it's a great movie. I mean, obviously, it's a classic. I think most of our listeners would have already seen this and already know they should see it. I don't think. Yeah. I think that's a no brainer. I think if you haven't seen it, like you're actively avoiding it at this point. <laughs> um, yes, I definitely recommend it. Yeah, I agree. If you're if you're avoiding it because you don't like vampire movies, this is the vampire movie to watch. Like, because it's it's a vampire movie, but it doesn't feel like it. Like we've said it. If it's like the Goonies and Fright Night had a baby, and that's what this is. <laughs> but it's it's so much fun. I I've always loved this movie. I think it's I think it's great. I, the grandpa's fucking hilarious, and even Corey Haim has his funny moments. Like he's got his cheese ball moments, but mm. it's a funny movie and it. it it's it's enough horror to to balance out like it I don't consider this like a, a head full- gets ripped off in this. It's a very quick cut. Yeah, yeah. I remember it yeah. longer. He peels the guy's yeah. skull open. Yeah. Yeah. Scalp just bottom. like shh. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Give me more of that. <laughs> it's it's enough of a horror movie, but I'm, it's it's not like full on horror, but um I th- I think it's so much and I had a massive crush on Jason Patrick when I was a kid. It's so huge. I think it was his lower lip. He had a good it's, lower it's lip. It's a voluptuous it's a, lower it's lip. It's a really good that. lower lip. It's, and there's a lot of, there's yeah. that, where he's drinking the blood, there's a lot of, mm, where he's, yeah. like, his tongue is protruding on the lip and everything. It's just, I think it's, as yeah. like a, even as like a six year old, I'm like, huh, like, oh. I really like his lower lip. <laughs> what is this feeling? <laughs> and you know, his jaw goes on for days. It's great. Um, but yeah, no, I think, I think this movie is great. I, I, I love, um, 
I love the final line of this movie. Grandpa's it last is line. Very good. There are very few movies that I remember the final line of the movie, and this is one of them. Like it's just so perfect. I was like, I remember the first time I wa- I remember the first time I watched this, just sitting there thinking, that was that's how you end a movie. Like a great just, line, fade to black. It's a great that's line it. because it says so much about the movie you just watched. Yes. Which is great. It's perfect. And especially you end on like the characters' reactions. And it just it's it's not just a fade to black, it's like the lights on set went to black. Exactly. Which is cool. Like we're done shooting. Yeah. Like drop Maybe. the mic. Yeah. We're like done. Like it wasn't yep. done in that post. Was yeah. Right, yeah, not in post, like on set. <laughs> yeah. Lights down. I love it. Was it. Very nice. It's perfect. I love I love that last that last shot. It's great. Um yeah. I mean, I like vampire movies. Um but this one is this one's one of my absolute favorites. It's so much fun. I definitely recommend it for eighties aficionados, vampire aficionados. You should just watch it. It's great. Love it. Colin? I think it's impossible for me to give this any kind of objective review. Um, <laughs> yeah, 30 years, I think so. Well, it's more than, you know, like, I mean, my uh, identification with the Lost Boys as a piece of, you know, pop culture stuff, it's more than just, you know, a pop culture relic. Yeah. I wore out my fucking VHS tape that I had of this, yeah. which I think I recorded off of something, but I watched it, and this is not an exaggeration. Every day. <laughs> For how long? <laughs> At least a summer. For a summer. I'm yeah. going to say like, it was a summer. A, a summer. It in the, you know, well, watched it. You're doing stuff, but it was on. But it was on. Every day. Yep. Mm-hmm. Um, Random question. Do you guys have a movie that you did like legitimately had <clears throat> yes. a movie that you watched every day for a significant amount of time? Mm-hmm. What was yours? I have two of them. Grace and Wayne's World. When? When, when were I these was times? like 10 years old. 10 years old? Mm-hmm. Sean? Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. When constant ah uh, probably around the same time ten yeah. years old. every day Con- yeah. it just on. I would get up early just- before we went to school to be able to watch these movies before I went to school yeah really? it was just for on. over a year it was that way yeah I have two one was Sleeping Beauty when I was four to six mm-hmm. like two <laughs> oh, years two yeah. solid years well, yeah. yeah and well, the then four to six year olds do the same thing every yeah day. I watched yeah. it every yeah. fucking yeah. day yeah. I could as a discerning I could still recite it. someone older child yeah it was yeah. but then I I repeated this. When I was like, uh, I don't know, this was probably like 2012. I watched The Avengers every day for six months. <laughs> six months. Sometimes I didn't take just, it out of my Blu-ray. Player. Sometimes you just need that comforting blanket. I, I of was a movie, going. No, you know? yeah. this was this was post breakup. Yeah, I oh, wanted yeah, nothing like, else. I wanted Avengers. There are just like there I need, that's I need all Thor. I, I need Thor and Loki. <laughs> I needed Loki I need for six comfort. months. There are some movies in our lives that are, act as comforting blankets that always make us feel good, no matter yeah. how many times we've seen them. And like you can't justify that or explain oh, yeah. that to anyone any other way. Other than, yeah, yeah. Well, and that's just how it is. You know what's a feel good go to bed movie the zodiac I love there was zodiac. a good there was a yeah. good few months where it's just like i think i'm gonna watch zodiac again yeah. and just yeah. put it in and, and that's the it. thing like that's the only way you can explain it is it's my yeah. comforting it's just like it's comforting blanket it's, movie it you know? i don't even know if that's but it. when you're when you're whatever 14 years old i don't know if you're thinking about it that way i mean mm-hmm. now obviously or maybe it was psychologically yeah. or something but like there was something that i connected to in this because i think i was like I mean, I had to have been around Corey, you know, the the two Corys, the Frog Brothers yeah. and Sam's age. But I identified with Michael because I knew this was what was in my future, right? And somehow, like, this Vampires. was a window into, like, an immediate window into uh, the next, because, I mean, what? It was like, because I, I know I was a freshman. I know this because uh, I was in a drama class and uh, I did a scene from The Lost Boys. <laughs> Break. <laughs> Oh right? God! I wish there was a video. Uh, what well, scene? What it was scene? a scene with uh, Star because uh, of course uh, you have, have, have an attractive girl in the yeah. of course. Amy, if you're still out there, I remember. <laughs> but uh, you know. will you be my star? Uh, yeah, as he reached I the hand out that's why I was her like, I'm and tra- lifted her up from her desk. Oh yeah, yeah, because she, she puts her hand on your face and you get yeah oh. the uh, oh, the sexual tension moves. But I can't remember if like it was one of those things where you were partnered up with somebody or if we. I can't remember how it happened. Now like I'm like. I don't know, but whatever. And I also did a uh, book report or whatever, like some kind of, I guess you had to. I know it's a book report, but I'm doing the Lost Boys. I remember. (laughs) So maybe it wasn't a book report, but I remember like trying to convince the teacher in the, you know, in the written argument, right? (laughs) Sure. That the Lost Boys, because of its diverse cast of adults, teenagers and kids. 
had something That's for diverse. everyone. Yeah. Like you should watch it because like it's got adults in it. And you know they're doing. You know, like you know now you look at they're it. It's like this is a kids movie. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> this is they went on a date. <laughs> but it's like look, mm-hmm. it's got you know Diane Weist and Edward Herman, and they have their own plot line yeah. in this movie. You should watch it. Yeah, I don't know. It's the logic mm-hmm. of a fourteen year old. That's amazing. Yeah, um, if you want to make a point? You'll just bend the world to it. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, so yeah, I guess it's ingrained so much. In, I mean, even watching it tonight is kind of you know like taking you back to like the you know the music and the fashion and uh, just the style of the movie reminds you of you know like that uh, you know it's the nostalgia trip. But mm. critically, now you're trying to you know distance yourself, look at it as a film. I am in awe. I guess of uh, the skill that Schumacher or his editor and uh, the Brown. cinematographer, yeah. cinematographer is Michael Chapman shot fucking raging bull. Right. Wow. I mean, wow. like, yeah. he had taken time off doing movies and came back with the lost boys. <laughs> um, <clears throat> Something fun. Yeah. Well, it's yeah. a big budget Hollywood movie and they're throwing yeah. money at you. So, you know, sure. Um, but it's amazing to me now looking at it, how much they're able to accomplish with swooping the camera in really yeah. fast and having a decent uh, sound design. Yeah. Because I'm like, what's happening in this scene? Like, they got nothing. They got lights on poles out in the fucking dark, but they got motorcycles on the soundtrack, they got wind machines, and they got cameras doing all sorts yeah. of weird shit, and music coming in at just the right time, it, and it makes it seem like something's happening, and I'm yeah. like, this yeah. had to be awkward as hell to act, because these lines are bad, or not bad, they're just right. rote, you know? Yeah. Right. Or it's just re- so far, reactions yeah. that, like, if not... Put together like almost perfectly, like especially earlier when the couple gets the roof torn off of their car, mm-hmm. he gets pulled out, and she's just in it, cowering and screaming yeah. like any other. That's movie. a if good you don't example. Put it together because what's there? Yeah, what's there? Yeah, what's there? there? There's nothing. A red There's a light, camera. Her <laughs> screaming. <laughs> yeah, and a camera going. What we're in supposed on her. to get out of this is the Lost Boys fly around all over the place. Yes, but besides from I believe one blue screen shot of Billy Worth as Dwayne <laughs> yanking uh, yeah. uh, Sam. Up into the air. Yeah. I don't think you actually see them fly. No, it's always like half. But it's always the camera point of view and the flapping sounds of their coats or yeah. whatever the hell. And that sound that they have that, you know, the it sounds like an air hose going off yeah. or whatever. You know, it's like those things combined are supposed to give you the impression that, you know, you, that these vampires are flying all over the place. And I'm like, you know, at the time, I just, you know, that was what you did. Now you look at it and you're like. Nowadays, you'd actually see them, I mm-hmm. think, in yeah. you know, a movie. And maybe that makes us dated. I don't know, because it's, well, it's clear well, that did. there's something missing. I guess, as, you know, now as a modern film watcher, sure. like, how come I'm not seeing them flying all over the place? But are we not, like, looking at that going, like, that's, look what they did. Look what they did with just a, a, maybe a trickery of a camera angle, sound, like, a very yeah. extremely competent sound design. Look, look, look what they could accomplish because they're also not just showing you everything. Yeah, like is, they it, would is, it today. More, is it more they're impressive giving, with the less is more? Right. Yeah. It's making your audience like look at your movie and interact with it at that point. It's like there's putting it's giving the audience something to do at this point. Mm-hmm. I, yeah. I, it's giving. I think it's giving a because little because in more my mind I audience. can see what the vampires. Yes, exactly. You know, knowing that they're transformed, the swooping down on that security yes. guard at the beginning or on the surf Nazi's girlfriend. You know. Yes. Like I know what they look like coming out of the right. sky. Right. Right. Never, them, never. But you don't ever it. see it. Never yeah. see it. But you've got <clears throat> it in your head. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And we don't like that's the missing link of interaction from movies today that we don't get as much anymore yep. that is something we get from these movies which i think is great mm-hmm. you leave your audience to use their imagination yeah, sometimes. use your imagination yeah. that like you know so you can only do that because you that. can't pull it off any other way and now you can pull everything off and so you're never going to get that kind of but just, yeah. you know now it's like yeah. it would take a filmmaker to use restraint which yeah. they don't and they never do no. well rarely they don't right? have to they don't because they don't have yeah. to and because it's also it's expected from the cinematic the lexicon of cinematic language it's expected which is why i think that's what dates this movie yeah. now you know with a modern eye looking at it you know you know you're aware of what they're not doing is right. my point you know the, yeah. that it's like well this is an old movie because of this but i mean it's still the energy level is uh you know, still plays the way it did originally. It's such a cool movie. You know, it's just, it's uh, like one of the epitomes of cool. Like Michael the doors was cool. Like, like I bought that jacket. 
Yeah. <laughs> of course. Hey, man. Um, who, I oh, tried to wear my hair like I had his hairstyle as best I could buy that out. jacket. Oh yeah. I mean, come on. I read the book. There's a scene where you know he buys the jacket and saves up the money and whatever the fucking star gives him the you know and she like you know yeah. like it bleeds a little bit and oh, she yeah. licks her lips and oh shit. um oh cut from the movie and of Kelly Joe Minter cut from the movie anyway um <laughs> but I think I've always like had my go to like summer movies. There's The Lost Boys and there's Point Break. Point, Point Break. Break is great. Point Break. Tie back to uh, Near Dark yep. because they're both directed by Catherine Bigelow. Bigelow. Yep. But yeah, those are the two movies. That, and I've never lived in Los Angeles, but for some reason, the Los Angeles summer of the beach and the water. And it's the Lost Boys on the boardwalk. And it's surfing with the uh, Point Break. You know, it's like those movies feel like summer. And it's the music. Like that's all. That's on my summer soundtrack is, you know, the, mm-hmm. the, the music from those two movies. Um, point break, right? Yeah, mm-hmm. point break. Not, not point break. <laughs> not point break. Point break. Yeah. So yeah, I'm saying basically <laughs> I'm a biased reviewer and can't tell you, but you've seen it. I'm I'm also this is probably the most uh, mainstream movie. That I'm <laughs> ever, I mean, I feel like I'm picking Back to the Future. Everyone has seen this movie. Yeah. yeah. Like you know, wow. yeah. we're watching The Lost Boys. Okay. Yeah. So, but it's the 30th anniversary, and so, since it has such a uh, you know, I mean, it was my Goonies. I think I said this yeah. on the Monster Squad episode, but I was lying. I came to the Monster Squad. When I was older than right. you know, thirteen. You can't think of every movie you yeah, ever saw. It was the yeah. lo- it was the Lost Boys. Was the, the you know that was my Goonies. Like I didn't care about fucking you know pirate ship uh, treasure. It was fucking killing vampires. It was you know as a kid you know you want the stakes and you know. Yeah. Uh, Did the Lost so, Boys make you not feel like a Lost Boy anymore, Colin? <laughs> I wanted to be a Frog Brother. Mm-hmm. Well, I also wanted to be a Lost Boy. You know, it was yeah, it was uh, just the, the all around and the Ghostbusters. Also, yeah. another movie that was just on. Yeah. 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 Ghostbusters. Yeah. yeah, I wanted to be one of them too. Uh, rode around with a bike. That I painted my own fucking shirts. Yeah. I had a backpack. With, oh yeah, oh yeah. So that's uh, you have to see the Lost Boy. I mean, you I don't know. To. I'm hoping that it to. survives and becomes I like. I still it, think it is one of the upper echelon of vampire following. movies. It's 30, yeah, but it's yeah. a think huge about it. following. Thirty years. Thirty years. Yeah. Thirty. We're thirty years on, and I think it's. I mean, still, it's still something, right? They don't put oh, out yeah. massive, big special editions and all this stuff for this movie. No, I think there are still screenings of point? it, though. I, th- I think so. You know? like but it still... could be because we're building up to the 30th, but there's a lot of them now, it yeah. seems like. But it know. seems like, I mean, uh, I un- think... Unfortunately, if... a big part of that is a lot of the cast is no longer with us anymore. Yeah. Yeah. But a I lot. think like... Is there if... like two guys? Well, Brooke McCarter, uh, the blonde, the twisted sister, he's dead. Mm-hmm. Oh. Corey Hayman. He's dead, Corey Yeah, mm-hmm. so at least three of them are gone. So Jason Patrick's still going. But I think if you look, I mean, on the law, if you look at a, the, you know, at the no, infinite, Bernard Herman is also dead. Sorry. Well, it's also very mm-hmm. true. If, but if you look at the, infinite, and those dogs, both dogs are mm-hmm. also dead. Also very yeah. dead. Yeah. As awesome as they were. Yeah, no, and Thorne are also dead. Gone. Anybody else is dead? <laughs> <laughs> Anybody else died? I don't think so. Okay. Just want to make sure. But I think if you look at like the infinite timeline, like uh, eventually, like every movie will hit its point where it's just doesn't go on anymore yeah i think we still got some years before. So that's what movies. i wonder you know i mean i always uh, that's why i'm always you know in the back of my mind I always think about this about movies that i love yeah. and it's like how much of a shelf life does this have after the generations that yeah. appreciated mm-hmm. it because i mean how big of a fan are you of tom mix movies right trigger <laughs> the fucking horse you watch a lot of those i don't think i've ever fucking seen one no that's what i'm saying yeah. right uh, I mean, because but eventually, yeah, they'll all go yeah. away. That's but why I mean, it's up to parents to pass it on to their children. Well, I don't even know if it's it's cinephiles, right? Cinephiles mm-hmm. will keep. But I mean, mm-hmm. like Lost Boys is not a major event. It is a, a product of its time that I think has got like a little bit of legs because of nostalgia. I don't know if like new kid, you know, kids are picking it up now and like they're going to carry. You know, it's like maybe it's us, right? The, I think it they is keep going us. with this. And then eventually it's just going to look old. Like, what's what's that the phone that they're hanging on to? You know, we don't know what that is. So and, you know, all this try stuff. and show it to them as young as possible. Yeah, yeah. So, it's yeah. Normal, so it's normal to Lost them. Yeah. Boys and, Lost Boys yeah. and Fright Night. It That's does feel do. like it's a PG-13 fucking horror movie. It Nobody does. says fuck. The, the <laughs> sex scene is very chaste. The blood is all in, like, red lighting. So but it, that's yeah. also where I think it gets its R, is yeah. from the, the when they're on the beach, that's yeah. hell on earth. You know yeah. what I mean? Oh, that's, yeah. that's very intense, and that's an R rating. But the rest of the movie feels... 
feels like the Goonies. I mean, it could yeah. be a yeah. PG rated kids movie. This Even movie, the, from the vampire is very uh, orange, it's, right? It's just kind of and viscous. filled with glitter. Yeah. And yeah, glitter. glitter. It's a big deal on the convention circuit, though. Like, it's got a huge following oh, yeah. convention, but that's because it's impossible to get anyone from this movie to come to a convention anymore. Yeah. You know. When's Jason Patrick gonna embrace Kelly yeah. Joe Minter is at Flashback Weekend this fall. Yeah, and we're just scrambling for her autograph okay, for yep. this movie, right? Yeah, yeah not yeah. for something else. I just want to ask her, like, what what happened in yeah. your scenes that were clearly <laughs> right? cut? Mm-hmm. She's the she works at the video store with Diane Weiss yeah. to, as her coworker. See, that's 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 the only reason I would go to conventions to see certain people. Like, what happened? Tell mm-hmm. me stories. Oh yeah, like, why were you not in this? They anymore? have great stories. Yeah, mm-hmm. stories. Yep. If you can get them to like tell you stories, mm-hmm. that would be the best reason to go to a convention. Mm-hmm. All right, so we're probably running a little long. Thank you for sticking with. Thank this you this long. for the long yeah. stories. <laughs> and uh, next week we're going to be watching a movie that's chosen by Sean. What are we watching next week? We are finally going to watch Predator 2. Yay! As long as no one dies, finally. we're going to watch Predator 2. <laughs> On the anniversary of Predator, we'll be watching Predator, Predator 2. 2. Because I don't do this normal shit where we do the retrospectives <laughs> no. of the uh, classic Sean. movies that yeah. everyone loves. Because you are the Sean of sequels. I yes. am the Sean of sequels, and we're watching Predator 2. <laughs> Fuck Predator. Predator 2. All I right. love Predator, but Predator 2. <laughs> All right, there so is. that's next week on the Saturday Night Freak Show. We hope you'll join us for that episode also. Please do. And until then, the basement is going dark. <laughs>